going on? It's your boy H Money, Mr. The Zone. We in the building. Let's get it. Shout out to Danny the Great already cooking. Danny the Great, you know, with the pressure, the pressure, pressure, pressure. Danny the Great says, No Mustanko will get destroyed. He said, Let's go. Stop ducking Devin Haney. You know what I mean? No Mustanko. Y'all boys going hard, man. Shout out. First of all, I want to give a special shout out to Bill Haney. Congratulations, my brother Bill Haney. You dig? Straight up and down. Shout out to Bill Haney, man. BH the Great. Congratulations, Bill Haney, man. You know what I mean? Devin Haney is the boogeyman of the lightweight division. On oh, God. On oh, God. I see you over here, <laughs> MMA champ, sharing your link. Stop ducking Haney. In the H Money voice, you heard me. Stop ducking, Haney. You know how we cook, man. You know how we cook, my boy. We always cooking, man. You know where the. You know what I mean. Let's see. Can we watch it? Yo, what's up? This is TFMO. This is TFMO Lopez Senior. What's up? What's up? This, this H Money, Mister the Zone. I, I work with Devin Haney Promotions, man. We trying to make the fight happen. Um, what's up with the uh? You got the this, wrong this, you know, yeah, this you this got is man. Stop number. ducking Haney. Stop ducking Haney. Hey, Stop ducking Haney, bro. Join, he's ducking. I'm I'm live right now, Lopez Senior. I'm live. Come join the panel. Don't. Stop ducking Devin Haney. Stop ducking Devin Haney. You dig? On oh, God, you feel me? Man, hit the like button, man. We live on the zone with it. What up, though? Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye-bye. You feel me? Hey, look. Salute H Money to Don. Shout outs to MMA Champ. You heard me. Shout outs to MMA Champ. You heard me. On oh, God. Shout out to my boy Toronto. Ignorant boxing in the building. For those that didn't see it, let's run it back. Yo, what's up? This is TFMO. This is TFMO Lopez Sr. What's What's up? This this H Money, Mr. The Zone. I, I work with Devin Haney Promotions, man. We trying to make the fight happen. Um, what's up with the uh? You got the, the wrong the, the, yeah, this you this is man. Stop number. ducking Haney. Stop ducking Haney. Hey, Stop ducking Haney, bro. John, he's Don't ducking. I'm I'm live here. right now, Lopez. Stop ducking Haney, bro. Stop ducking Haney. You feel me? You know what I mean? That's how we doing it on this side, man. Hit the like button right now. Subscribe to the channel. You feel me? Come on. Hey, MMA champ, bro. You see what you posting up in here, bro. They already here for that. They already here for that. Big Lloyd, what up, though? Big Lloyd, man. My boy Lloyd in here. What's good? What up, Big Lloyd? Tap out King in this motherfucker. D Hodges in here. Let me drop the link, man. Shout out to Bill Haney once again, man. Bill Haney, the realest in the game, bro. You know what I mean? C congratulations to Bill Haney. He took his shahada today, man. Bill Haney became a Muslim today. You feel me? Out there in Vegas. You know what I mean? Big ups to the brother, Bill Haney. You understand me? For real. Big Lloyd in here. You understand? Bill Haney took his shahada today. Congratulations to Bill Haney. He became Muslim today, man. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah, ignorant boxing. We might have to post that. We might have to post it. It's on Bill Haney Instagram. Bill Haney in Vegas. You know what I mean? Took his shahada. Bill Haney, man, the realest in the game, bro. Don't get no real. It don't get no realer than Trill Bill. If you know what I mean. It don't get no realer than Trill Bill. If you know what I mean, bro. Oh, God, man. No cap, man. You know what I mean? Okay, my boy Sylvie in here. Let me give Big Lloyd a, a wrench right quick. We got the free smoke link in the chat. Hey, yo, Big Lloyd, welcome to the channel, my brother. Hell yeah, Big Lloyd, come through, rock with me. Big Lloyd, much love to you, bro. Oh, yeah, let's get back to this entertainment right quick, though. You dick? Yo, what's up? This is TFMO. This is TFMO Lopez Sr. What's What's up? This, this H Money, Mr. The Zone. I, I work with Devin Haney Promotions, man. We trying to make the fight happen. Um, what's up with the uh? You got the this, wrong this, this, yeah, this you this got is the man. Wrong Stop ducking Haney. Stop ducking Haney. Hey, Stop ducking Haney, bro. Join. 
been playing with him. MMA, what's good, my boy? I work for Devin Haney Promotions, bro. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, you remember when I did that? Yeah, bro. What you but, thought uh, about it the first time I did that? You're breaking up a little bit. Dang. What about now? Do you hear me? You're breaking up bad for me, bro. Okay. But yeah, shout out to everybody in the chat. Go to MMA Champ Boxing Dynasty. There's going to be a full fight card right there, bro. So salute, H. For sure, yo. Uh, MMA Champ. So, you know, when, when I first contacted Tiffy Lopez here, and I called him out for ducking Devin Haney, what was your thoughts when you first seen me do that? You hear me? Take come off mute. Yo, yo. Yo, MMA champ. I don't know what's up with him. Hey, look, hit the fucking like button. D Hodges, join the panel. Yo, 24 yo, yo, Geezy. Yo, yo. yo H you hear me? Yeah. Yo, so when I when I first contacted TFMO Lopez Senior and I called him out for Duck and Devin Haney, I mean, what did you think about that whole can incident? Put, can you put his number in the private chat? Nah, hell no, nah, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> you crazy as hell. Hey, one more time for the people, real quick. Can we, let's do it one more time for the people, right quick. This, this is Yo, what's up? This is TFMO. This is TFMO Lopez Sr. What's up? What's up? This, this H Money, Mr. The Zona. I, I work with Devin Haney Promotions, man. We trying to make the fight happen. Um, What's up with the... uh? The, 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 yeah, this, this is, man. Stop ducking, Stop ducking Haney. Stop ducking Haney. Stop ducking Haney, bro. John, he's ducking. I'm, I'm live right now, Lopez Sr. I'm live. Stop ducking Haney. The Hodges, what up, though? Chilling, my brother, man. The Hodges. Chilling, pimp. Chilling, pimp. We know how to come chill with you because, you know, I only pop in when I know what I'm talking about. And mad respect to Big Bill because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a moderator at Punch's channel. And they both, I watched both interviews. Yo, Bill Haney is, like, giving so much ill, like, ill answers, like, Getting to the point, telling what he want, who ducked him, all that. And then later on that night, Teal, uh, whatever, Junior, Teal Fields' father came in. That nigga was all over the place. Yo, I mean, everybody in the let's chat was getting Everybody, let's, everybody, let's get everybody this straight, bro. Hmm? Let's get this straight. Get what Would straight. you consider yourself a casual? Nope, hardcore. I can tell you anything about it. Who you want to know about? Unless, uh, they're unless they're garbage and I don't wash them, but. Now I'm not you no casual. Estrada are it is. Now I know he's fighting Chocolito. They're about to have fight number two. It's chocolate. It's chocolate Because I don't care about them. If I don't care about the people, I don't watch them. You I'll said they're that. trash. So but no, but trash. I didn't say it. I said I don't watch them. I don't know. I don't like every boxer, but I'm a hardcore fan. But some people I can't watch because it's on the zone. Some people I can't watch because it's on. Mexico Deportes. So because I, it's on the I, zone, why don't you watch the zone, bro? What's wrong with the zone? Because I don't got no the zone money, nigga. I'm broke. I ain't gonna lie, nigga. I gotta sit up here in front like nigga got millions of dollars, nigga. Niggas broke. Nigga lost his job due to COVID. Getting unemployment. Right, got kids okay, to take care of, nigga. So down. I don't got money, nigga. I don't need bodies. See, I just put down the dogs then. I don't got no motherfucking money. If put I have money, dogs, I'm motherfucking then, what dogs? Put what dogs you talking about? You don't even know me, dude. Real talk. So don't even get up here like that, dude. I'm not that nigga, dude. Hey, should tell you. Hey, what happened? Hey, hey, well, what you arguing about, MMA champ? Um, said, the, the I, don't even got, I don't even got dogs. Put the dogs down. I don't got no dogs. <laughs> Fuck is yeah. he talking about? Remember, you always say, I put down the dogs. I put down the dogs. Don't you say that, bro? I don't. When have you ever heard me say, I put down the dogs? I, I talk to H Money all the time. Have you ever heard me on anywhere say I put down the dogs? The fuck that mean? I'm killing my dog. You ain't never heard me say nothing like that. You must put got the, the dog wrong. Down. Put you the must dog got. Down. You must got. Yeah, the hey, hey, MMA champ, chill out, bro. Chill out, bro. Let's talk about boxing. No, and Yo, I just so, was uh, saying though. No, I was saying that before I was rudely interrupted. But tell the female junior he didn't know what question to answer because punch in the chat was just coming at him like do 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 and he's all over the place but bill haney he gave a nice solid interview 
and everything he said was facts. He was about to pull out the seats. Yeah, I like that Bill Haney, yo. He's a real dude, yo. Yeah, facts, D. Hodges. Bill Haney, the real deal. Oh, God, bro. You know what I mean? Shout out to D. Hodges. So, D. Hodges, man, what's your thoughts on Sean Porter today? He said that, uh, you know, he's ready to fight us. Terrence, Car Terrence Crawford in April. Do you think he just uh you broke up pimp with Pretty, Cruz. Yeah, just, okay, go ahead. Nah, you, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh what'd he say again? Because I, I couldn't hear him. He like as soon as he said something, it just went. I couldn't hear nothing else. What'd he say? What was the question again? Oh, what was it? I wait for him to come back in because I couldn't even hear what the question was. What was the question again, Pimp? Because I couldn't even yeah, hear. Yeah, th this was the question. So, D. Hodges, what you think about uh, Sean Porter today saying he's ready to fight Terrence Crawford in uh, April? What's your thoughts on that? Was he capping or was he for real? I hope he's for real, and I just hope don't. I hope Bud take it because if he don't take it, then. Ah, uh, he lose more fan points from me because he's already. Right. It ain't him. it ain't his fault, D Hodges. D no, I'm just saying. No, I know that, but I'm saying if Sean Porter's finally with it, go in there and whoop Sean and beat him badly, then you got more clout because Arrow struggled with Sean, and some people think Sean Porter won that fight. Listen. So if you if you can go in there and whitewash him better than Danny and and Arrow, you'll get a little bit more credit though. You have right, to. Okay. You know how because he's a good name on the resume. You know how many fighters Duck Spence? I mean, uh, Crawford. You know, we got Spence saying 80 20. Are you kidding me? That's officially a duck. Then we got Porter who ducked the 2 million, even though he got 1.7 million in his last fight. Okay. Then we got, uh, what's his name? What's this guy's name? Shit, Danny uh, Garcia been ducking since 140. Yeah. Manny yeah, been ducking. Bad. Manny been ducking since 135. Dude, yo, people oh, don't also, want to admit it, but. Also, but as a boogeyman a little bit, though. Pacquiao's been ducking because he was in negotiations with Pacquiao, but now Pacquiao want to fight Mikey, who is very low competition uh, compared to Crawford. Facts. Oh, you already know that, dude. Doug, if they're not going to fight Crawford at 135, him and Danny, or at 140, what makes you think he's going to fight but at 147? And he's knocking people out. He's knocking more people out at 147. Than he did at his lighter weights. Now they really scared of him. What, Danny's going to jump up to 154 so he don't have to fight him? Because like I said, people forget about that. He openly said he ain't fighting Terrence Crawford. Danny Garcia, what, at 140? When Bud became the mandatory, that nigga dropped and moved up to 147. Facts. Bud is a boogeyman. He might not be the biggest boogeyman, but that nigga been ducked by somebody in every division he's been in. A couple of people. That's facts. I'm a bud fan. Yeah, he is being ducked. You, you hear me, D. Hodges, or am I breaking up? Nah, you fine, baby. You fine. Yo, D. Hodges, you're right. Terrence Crawford is the boogeyman. You got Ter uh, Earl Spence out here ducking him. You know, so many fighters uh, duck this man. Manny Pacquiao's ducking him. Terrence Crawford is the real deal. Now, Terrence Crawford got a lot of haters. He got a lot of fanboys that's out here hating on him 24 hours a day. You know what I mean? But it doesn't take away from the greatness of a Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford is the next Marvin Hagler. When you talk about switch hitting, su switching to Southpaw to Orthodox, nobody does it better than Terrence Crawford. You know, I haven't seen a fighter do that since um, Marvin Hagler. What about you? Oh, no, his skill set is off the hook. Oh, no. And, and I mean, now he got popped. And I don't know what everybody's talking about. Dude, he's stopping out way not these people he's knocking out are naturally bigger. But now if he would have went up there and was just getting decisions, oh, he's pillow fisted, oh, he don't got no power. But how you can say a man don't got no power and he carried his power up three weight classes. Three. And like I said, people gotta give him credit. So what a man Chinny Khan. Nobody made Khan quit. Khan was whooping people up, and they just happened to catch him. Bud boxed that boy so bad, Khan quit. Who could say they made Khan quit? Everybody could say they knocked him out, but who made him quit? And who knocked Gamboa out first when Gamboa was still young Gamboa before he injured Bud? Yo, yeah, nigga better put some respect on his name a little bit. Don't get me wrong, he might not fought the best champion, but they was the champion at the time. What could he do about it? So what? It ain't my fault the champion's a bum. 
and I beat them. They're not bums, bro. Them. I mean, you know, I don't think they're bums. No, because you go ahead, D. I'll just finish what you were saying. All right, bro. I, I wanna. Uh, I'm going to switch the topic a little bit because this is the topic of the show. So, uh, you know, we got 115 super flyweight man. The best division in boxing is super stacked. So we got Rungfasai, we got Ayoka, we got Tanaka, we got uh Quadras, we got uh Estrada, we got uh Chocolatito. So just because it's a lower it's a lower rate class, not a lot of people watch it, doesn't mean it's not stacked, man. And I wanna say this 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 division, these guys are fighting for less money and fighting each other. This is what boxing is supposed to be. Not oh um 80 20 and I'll fight you. You're saying that's another three division champ, another champion, another uh you know former undisputed guy? Really? You saying that to him? Even though these guys in the low weight class, they're getting paid way less than you fighting each other and giving us great fights. We're getting Chocolatito Estrada tomorrow. We're probably going to get the win of Chocolatito versus Estrada and uh, versus Rungvisai for the rematch. So, it, it, like, there's too much politics in the lower weight class. I understand there's more eyes on them, but there's no excuse. We need to get back to the real boxing. The the, the two fighters are afraid of using, losing their O. I think that's because of, you know, the Floyd era and all this stuff. It's okay to lose your O. What do you guys think in the comment section? Subscribe to H Money. Hit the like button. We in there, bro. We in the building. Shout out to MMA champ, man. You know what I mean? Uh, MMA champ, he got a great channel. Subscribe to him right now. You know what I mean? He's putting in a lot of work. He's very entertaining. He's funny. You know what I mean? MMA, tell the fans a little bit more about your channel real quick. Yo, my channel is MMA Champs Boxing Dynasty. You know, we do predictions. We do, you know, uh, some fight uh, streams, full cards, bro. I don't know, man. But uh, listen, man, it's a great channel. Go check it out. Uh, there's a little treat for you on the live streams. That That's all I'm going to say. I can't really say too much. I want to get this. Oh, the what channel. are you Put up your link. Put the yeah, link up in the, the chat, up. and before we go, I'll sub to you, bro. Even though, Yo, you know, MMA I, mean, I, 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 MMA I sub to all because these my peoples. I like MMA champ, though. We always say what up to each other. We're just joking. Just so the people, because they be thinking we got beef. No, we're just fucking around. We say hi to each other every time in all the other chats. MMA, so put his thing up, and I'll sub to him. Yeah, salute to D. Hodges. You know, you see in the chat, I'm not going to say it on live stream, but you see what I'm going to do, bro. <laughs> Yo, uh, 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 go Don says, uh, what's your channel, MMA champ? Who is put it in it the chat right here? Take that down, bro. Take, uh, yes, yeah, so the YouTube don't strike us, bro. Strike who? Strike you because I put that there. Just click, don't put it in there, then. What the fuck? No, nah, don't <laughs> okay. even take it out of there, then. What the fuck? Yeah. Don't fuck my shit up, man. <laughs> you feel me? Hey, look. Man, shout out to MMA champ. So, MMA champ, where you reside at? Man, what city you from? What state you representing? What hood you from? Bro. What you banging? Um, what you banging? Oh, I can't say that, bro. You're going to incriminate me, man. But look, let me say this. <laughs> Listen, so I'm, you, representing, hey, I'm representing. I'm representing. You know, I'm representing. Thailand, New York, bro. But nah, I'm re representing Brooklyn, New York. Shout out to my Nets, man. Let's go, bro. Hey, MMA champ. So, uh, what hood you? What hood you represent? What hood you from? What you representing? What your city is? What your state is? Brooklyn, New York, bro. Brooklyn! Mm -hmm. 
Brooklyn in the house. I'm originally from Haiti, bro. Shout out to all my zoes. Sakpase Mumbale. Okay. Hey, he Haitian. The Haitian sensation. Like John Pascal, if you know what I mean. Like Adonis and Stevenson, like Andre Berto, Richardson Hitchens. You know, made with the promotions. So, I mean, you from Brooklyn. Ain't Richardson Hitchens from Brooklyn? And isn't Richardson Hitchens a... Isn't he from Haiti as well? Isn't his yeah, family bro. from Haiti? The Haitian sensation. So you Richardson, Richardson, Hitchens, Richardson, you know yeah, Richardson Hitchens. He's gonna be the best of the best, bro. Uh watch his uh he fought Gary Russell in the amateurs, bro. I know my stuff, bro, but it's gonna be he's gonna be a great fighter, man. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Shout out to L Dog in the chat. He said, Luca Dantich, school James Harden. I mean, Luca, the truth. You know, he should be the MVP this year. He's only 22 years old. Oh, shout out to my boy Yova in the building. Shout out to Yo. What up, Yova? 24 Geezy, just on uh, Brown. What's good? What's good? We getting ready for these fights live on the zone. Hey, yo, tomorrow we got David Benavidez fighting. Also, tomorrow we got, uh, you know, Chocolate T. Ito versus Juan Francisco Estrada, the rematch, unification bout. You don't want to miss it. So, um, you know, starting off with D. Hodges, who you picking that fight? Dan, this is my mic fucked up. I'll be right back. I, I, I really, right I really, I told you, I really don't know Estrada and Chocolatito because I ain't gonna lie, I thought Chocolatito was a black dude, Spanish or chocolate, but I really can't give a pick because I don't know. But who won the first fight? That's what I got to go by. Who won the first fight? Hello? Everybody went off? I don't know. I, I guess I'll pick Estrada. Because I, I, you know, I don't know. I really don't know what they do. But I just, if I have to make a pick, life or death, I'll pick Estrada. <laughs> you know, I really don't, you know, don't know them too well, but. I, I got uh, a straw though. I got a straw though. Um, but I got uh, Chocolatito and Chocolatito won won the first fight. Oh, okay, then I'm gonna go. I, I got Strada KO, but Chocolatito did win the first fight. Oh, okay then. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a straw. I think he's gonna get that good back because I love them get backs. Because when you get that get back, sometimes that could turn into a trilogy, and that's just beautiful. So I, I, I love get backs. I always go for the person who lost the first time, unless it's my fighter. If it's my fighter, I don't want him to lose. But if there's fighters I don't know, I always go for the person who lost. Because I think the second time people usually come in, they know what they're dealing with, and they come in a little bit more harder. So I, I got the yeah. Estrada guy. Yeah. I, yeah, mean, I don't know him, though. I, and you know, but I think he's, fight, you know, just, he's pound for pound. He's, he's ranked top ten pound for pound. Your mic, you know? your mic is bad, man. What about now? It's so, a little bit. I can hear you a little bit, but not too thing. Yo, what about now? Y'all hear me? Yeah, what y'all hear me now? D Hodges, you hear me? Yo, D Hodges. Come off mute. Yeah, you just fine, bro, bro. Just if you hear me pausing, I'm talking to you and I'm cooking my pork chops at the same time. So sometime if I don't respond right away, that means I'm flipping the pork chops. But I'm still here, pimp. I can hear you fine. All right, audio good. Yeah, I'm on my phone now. Yo, shout out to Ignorant Boxing, man. Ignorant Boxing. He got a great channel as well. Everybody subscribe to Ignorant Boxing. He's a part of this channel right here, Ignorant Boxing. He, man, hey, he got a great channel. Like I said, man, appreciate Ignorant Boxing all the way. Since we're waiting for the fights on the Dress L Dog, first of all, L Dog, Harden is a better overall player than Luka Doncic. Of course, you lose time from time, but first of all, Harden uh, uh, put a triple-double on his first night 
playing with the Nets. Are you kidding me, bro? Harden, he he has a uh, better, he has more assists than uh, Luka Doncic. He has more rebounds than Luka Doncic. He has more points than Luka Doncic. And uh, you know, he's an overall better player. I bet everybody in this on this panel will agree with me. Agree with me, out dog, bro. But you are a casual to NBA, so I'm gonna go easy on you, bro. I, I agree with L Dog though. I think Luka Doncic is better than James Harden. I feel like Luka Doncic. Yeah, Luka Doncic is the best player in the NBA. You know what I mean? He 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 is the next Larry Bird. He is Come a walking. On. He does I lead the NBA. I, I, I don't I don't agree. James Come Harden. On, does, Come James on. Harden does everything. He averages almost a triple double. Do you know now? So Luka Doncic. You know how I'm just saying, you know how hard it is to get a triple double and the way he stepped back and all that, but you can't compare him because Harden gets to bring the ball up. Jokic is a center. You can't compare the two. Harden gets the ball way more because Harden could decide to pass the pass. I'm just saying, he's the shooting guard point guard, so he gets the ball more. But I'm Yo, not saying, I'm not saying, but you Let can't me compare. Out. I'm, you sorry, can't compare I'm sorry, you I'm can't sorry. compare a center to a point guard or a shooting guard. You can't Ooh, compare yeah. them. Let me, let me read this super chat uh, real quick, MMA. Shout out to Taylor Bell with the super chat. He says, started donations for a new microphone for H money. Yo, Taylor Bell, man, thank you for always supporting the channel. Thank you for uh, sending the super chats over. We definitely appreciate your donations, man. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. But y'all keep going. Go ahead, MMA champ. Go ahead, my boy. I just, was saying, I just was saying, you can't compare a point guard to a center, man. That's like trying to compare Michael Jordan to Will Chamberlain. You can't compare. Now you can say he's the best center yeah, or the no. power. Doncic like, is a point guard, too. But let me say this yeah, right now, bro. Listen, Harden has more MVPs. Uh, I mean, uh, he has more MVPs. He has more, uh, what's his name? been in the league longer. He's been in the yeah, league like of 10 course, years. Of course, of course, but he has more all-star games. Now, this is what I'm saying. He's over. He played more right games than in the NBA. Luka, well, let me say this. Luka's only 22 years old. James Harden's around 31, so James Harden's been in the NBA way longer. Right now, Harden's a better player, man. If if Luka Doncic's uh, career, you know, uh, progresses and everything, uh, of course, and he's playing yeah, he even OC. better than he was before, no, then but... okay, I'll say he's better than Harden, but right now, Harden's the better player. Okay, I respect your opinion. So, uh, yeah, man, let's talk about this real quick, man, this boxing talk, you know, breaking news. Um, you know, uh, we got David Benavidez tomorrow night. David Benavidez, who's considered the boogeyman at 168 pounds, starting with... Um, my brother, MMH, and David Benavidez tomorrow. What do you expect from the young phenom? I expect David Benavidez to stop his opponent late. Uh, I mean, early. You know, it's a bum bash. It's really his opponent we never heard of before. Uh, uh, right now until the fight got announced. Uh, Benavidez, he he's really not redeeming himself because it's not really a good fight. You know, he lost his uh. His uh, belt at the skills twice. Um, he's he was doing coke, which is uh, a PD uh, a performing enhancement drug. Uh, f that boxing thinks is. Uh, so I just think Benavidez is it should not be given the opportunities. People want him. He needs to work for it. You know why? Because this guy he brought that up himself. He had position to fight. Canelo, because he had a belt. But what did he do? He messed that up now. Now he has to literally revamp his whole career, man. It's sad, but it's true. Yo, uh, JJ Romano said, H, you seen Devin Haney on live earlier? He said, Lenare is not 100%. Haney wants Lomachenko. Yeah, he been wanted that Lomachenko fight, man. Lomachenko ducked Devin Haney in the past. You know what I mean? So... I mean, who am I to believe that Lomachenko really wants to fight when in the past we know that Lomachenko requested the franchise belt? He dug Devin Haney. We know that Lomachenko um, vacated his WBC world title. We know that Bob Arum, in the past, Bob Arum said Devin Haney signed with the wrong promoter, so he's not going to give him the Lomachenko fight. 
So, you know, you know, talk is cheap at the end of the day. Lomachenko, Lomachenko is a good fighter. You know, I respect Vasily Lomachenko, but I lost respect for him when he avoided Devin Haney and he ducked that smoke at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't believe that Loma wants to fight, to be honest with you. At the end of the day, the fight between Devin Haney and Vasily Lomachenko, that fight can happen next. It can happen. Lomachenko said he's available. He's available, I believe he said in May. He said he's he's available in April. Lomachenko said that, so why not make the fight happen? What's holding you back? Bob Arum said he's, re he's ready to make the Devin Haney-Lomachenko fight, and he's never said that in the past. So this fight right here, it can happen, but it's up to Vasily Lomachenko at the end of the day because he's the one that's being chased. He should be chasing Devin Haney. Devin Haney is the champion, but you got the champion chasing these guys. When have you seen another champion chasing everybody down because nobody wants to fight him? You know what I mean? I think Terrence Crawford is in a similar situation where Terrence Crawford is a champion and nobody wants to face him. You know, at the end of the day, we know Devin Haney's calling out the best names. We know Devin Haney called Lomachenko, Nomachenko years ago. We know Devin Haney wants that smoke. So you got to respect it. You got to respect the fact that Devin Haney's the only man calling out Tiafimo Lopez. You got to respect the fact that Devin Haney was the only guy calling out Lomachenko at that time. Then Tiafimo started calling out Lomachenko. But Devin Haney was the first guy to call him out. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's up to Lomachenko. If Lomachenko wants to make the fight, the fight can happen next. Other than that, he's capping. You know what I mean? Anybody want to respond to that? It's all good. It's all good. You know, if Loma fought Haney, they would say he ducked T.O. They would say a lot of shit. You know what I mean? People say a lot of shit. You know, so at the end of the day, we know the truth. We know that Bob Aram said, Devin Haney signed with the wrong promoter, so we're not doing any business with Devin Haney. Bob Aram said, let Devin Haney fight Linares. Then we'll make the Tiafimo Lopez fight. So it's up to, if it's up to Devin Haney, he'll fight these guys next. He told Tiafimo Lopez two years ago, we can make that fight happen. He told him that we can make it happen two years ago. So it's up to Tiafimo Lopez at the end of the day. It's up to Ryan Garcia to step up and fight for a world title. It's up to guys like Vasily Lomachenko to make these fights happen. You know what I mean? Hit the like button and subscribe, bro. He said, because T-Ho fighting Cam Bumsis. I call him Cam Bozo because his last fight against Lee Selby was a split decision. He barely beat Lee Selby. I thought Lee Selby won that fight. Cam Bosis got outboxed by Lee Selby on the zone. So why is Bob Aram saying Devin Haney signed with the wrong promoter when Bob Aram just made George Cambosis Jr., who's a top-ranked fighter, just like Tiafimo Lopez? It was George Cambosis Jr. versus Lee Selby. They fought on the zone. Please listen, Cambosis Jr., his last fight was on the zone. You know what I mean? So why Tiafimo Lopez can't fight Devin Haney? Why is Devin Haney with the wrong promoter? Why, why is Bob Arum saying Devin Haney is with the wrong promoter, but you just made the fight between George Cambosis and Lee Selby? Lee Selby, who signed to Matchroom Boxing and Eddie Hearn. You know what I mean? Bob Arum just made, he just made Pulev versus Anthony Joshua. Pulev is a top-ranked fighter. Pulev just fought on the zone. So why are you saying Eddie Hearn? Why are you saying that Devin Haney signed with the wrong promoter, but you're doing business with that same promoter, Eddie Hearn, when you made the fight between Jose Ramirez, Jose Ramirez versus Maurice Hooker. You made the fight between Anthony Joshua and Pulev. You made the fight between Lee Selby and George Cambosis Jr. But when it comes to Devin Haney, there's a whole lot of bullshit. When it comes to Devin Haney, it's a whole lot of excuses coming from Tiafima Lopez, coming from Brian Garcia, coming from Tank, coming from Bob Arum, coming from the fans. You know, we just want to see the fights at the end of the day. I respect Tiafima Lopez. I think Tiafima Lopez is a great fighter. He got a lot of skills. He got a lot of power. I just want to see the fights happen at the end of the day, bro. You know, somebody got to win and somebody got to lose. At the end of the day, I think Devin Haney's going to win the fight against Tiafimo Lopez. I think Devin Haney gives him a boxing lesson. 
gives them a boxing lesson, takes them to school. You know what I mean? I mean, I heard people say that, you know, uh, Lomachenko was a great boxer. Lomachenko is such a great technician in the ring. He has great footwork. Devin Haney has a, you know, he's a boxer too, just like Lomachenko. But why is people complaining about Devin Haney's style? They said Devin Haney's style is not good. His style is boring, but Lomachenko is doing the same thing. And they were saying Lomachenko is a better boxer than uh, uh, Muhammad Ali. Lomachenko was in there outboxing people, but nobody had a problem with it. Everybody was saying, oh, it's a thing of beauty. But when Devin Haney goes in there and does the same thing, and Devin Haney displays better skills than a facility Lomachenko, people say, we don't like Devin Haney style, but you like Lomachenko style. But they both was master boxers. I feel like Devin Haney got better skills than Lomachenko. Devin Haney's faster. He has better footwork than Lomachenko. But why is people... Why is people trying to um trying to hate on Devin Haney? Why are these same people hating on Haney Devin Haney? Haters, the, the Haney haters for no reason. <laughs> no reason, dog. What has Devin Haney did for y'all for y'all not to like him? Like, and he's trying to get the fight. How are niggas campaigning for Tio and he don't want it? Like, I don't understand these fucking fanboys or whatever the fuck you want to call them. Hey, what the fuck can we do about it, dog? Yo, niggas better stop putting respect on Haney's name, dog. He be outboxing people. So what? He don't need to knock people out. He outboxes them. Some people got knockout power, like Parnell Whitaker. I was comparing him to Parnell. You know what I'm saying? Parnell didn't have the most power in the world, but he had a good enough amount to not get a nigga out of there, and he had good movement to get him out of there. So, you know what I'm saying? And Haney got power. It just like I said, I be telling people I could watch that get boa fight again. I, I didn't see it the first time, but I really watched it and replayed it. He styled on him. If he wanted to stop, you know how many times he had Gamboa hurt? But no, he did the Errol Spence. I'm going to go out here and I'll box him. All right, Mikey, you see something? And Errol, I'll box him. That's what um dude, that's what dude see. And Haney just, Gamboa seen it and Haney just out box him. Dude, niggas need to put respect on Haney's name, dog. He's a beast. Exactly. Let me tell you this. People say Tyson Fury is such a great boxer. Oh, Tyson Fury got so much skills. Devin Haney has a similar style to Tyson Fury, where Devin Haney is a boxer. He loves to move. He has a great defense. Everybody gives Tyson Fury praise. I don't hear nobody saying Tyson Fury is a boring fighter. I don't hear Tyson Fury giving his hate. Like Bill Haney said, like Bill Haney said yesterday, dude, y'all people saying that crap because they just want to see Devin get in there and go Mexican style and get all hit and beat up. Bill's right. The point of boxing is to hit and not get hit, and Devin does that well, but people call that boring. Why wow, I'm just supposed to go in there yeah, throwing, so throwing, throwing, they... punches and throwing punches and then I get knocked the fuck out? No, Danny exactly. Hayes is a very, very smart fighter, defensive fighter. So some people might find it boring, but at the end of the day, he's going to have a long career because the less damage you take, the more longer your career is. People want him to go Mexican style, yo. Want to just him to go in there and just fight. No, nigga, boxing is a strategy. You got some boxers that can just knock you out with a punch, like uh, that Belonga guy, like Wilder, like Tank. Them people could knock you out, but there's some people that just got enough skills that if the KO come, the Haney don't look for KOs. He just look, he want to punish you for 12 rounds, and that's what he did. Gamboa did some good stuff against Tank. He kind of rocked Tank a little bit and all that. With Haney, it was those shoe shine. He shoe shined them all 12 rounds. So you can't compare that fight to Tank's fight. Tank had a little rough time. Um, Gamboa was landing shots. Haney, he wasn't landing near nutter. So they got to cut that narrative out. Exactly, exactly. Because the fighters that these same guys they love to praise Tyson Fury, Lomachenko, Devin Haney has a similar style to Tyson Fury. So if you got a problem with Devin Haney style, you should have a problem with the style of Tyson Fury's. You know what I mean? So now let's talk about Floyd Mayweather. He also wasn't a knockout artist. Floyd wasn't a knockout artist. You know what I mean? Floyd Mayweather, they said he was born, but he retired 50 and 0. Same thing people said about Bernard Hopkins. Oh, he's boring. I don't like his style. But Hopkins kept winning, kept winning. Same thing with um Andre Ward. Oh, Andre Ward is a boring fighter. But guess what? He was an Olympic gold medalist, two-time unified champion, two different weight classes. He won the Super Six. 
Andre Ward knocked out Kovalev. But people say, oh, it's a boring style, bro. I feel like these are just ways for these guys to try to downplay Devin Haney so they can hate and try to avoid him. Make every excuse in the game not to fight him. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, y'all love Tyson Fury so much. And Devin Haney got a similar style to a Tyson Fury. Give Devin Haney the same credit that you give Lomachenko for being a boxer. Lomachenko wasn't knocking everybody out. You know what I mean? Lomachenko went in there against Tiafimo Lopez. And he, the first six rounds, what did he do? He didn't even throw a punch. But you guys love his style. But you got a problem with Devin Haney's style. Is it because Devin Haney got a better style than Lomachenko? That's what it is. Devin Haney has a much better style than Lomachenko. He's faster and he's stronger. But what up, Tony? What's good, my boy? <laughs> What's going on, man? I'm just riding in the car, going out of town, visiting some family for some birthdays, you know. But um, I've been listening to your talk. And here's my thing. This is how I look at it. So I'm going to try to stay neutral with this the best possibly that I can. So when I compared Devin Haney to Tank Davis against Gamboa, I believe Devin Haney did a better job. Like, you don't have to knock somebody out to be impressive as far as I'm concerned because I've actually boxed before. You know what I mean? Like, there is a science to it. Hit and don't get hit. Outclass somebody. Make them look foolish along the way. You can still hear me, right? Yep, we hear you. Keep going. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Super quiet. I just want to make sure I didn't lose reception while I'm driving. But um, so anyways, you know, Devin Haney won every single round against Gamboa. And even though Tank knocked out Gamboa, Gamboa only had one leg past the second round. And it took him the whole fight to knock him out. So, you know, to me, Devin did a better job. However, I, I can't see the, the comparisons between Mayweather or, or Tyson Fury because both those guys, have fought legitimate challengers. Now, you could argue that people do appear to be dodging Devin Haney, and that may be true. But the fact still remains, his resume is trash. The people he has fought is trash. He's never been in there with a top 20 guy. Now, we could do a guy... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let, me, let me finish my point. We could compare him to a guy from America that was supposed to be the next thing in middleweight. Jeff Lacey, left hook Lacey, looked unstoppable fighting lower opposition the minute he got in there with Kawasaki, he got embarrassed why because he looked very good against low opposition but when you put him up there with an elite he got exposed and he never recovered from it so again we're not going to know how good Haney is until he fights Linares and then we can actually judge him off him fighting the top five fighter because at this point he ain't even for the top 20 guys so I do believe he has appeared to be ducked, but at the same time, I believe he gets a little too much hype that he doesn't deserve. Yeah, I'm going to say this, though, bro. Like, you said his resume is garbage, which is not true. Devin Haney been in there with a fighters like Juan Carlos Burgos, who went 12 rounds with Mikey Garcia. You know what I mean? Devin Haney beat him in a better fashion. Devin Haney just was in there with Gamboa, who's a two-time world champion. Gamboa, who just went 12 rounds with Tank. With a torn Achilles, Gamboa, who gave Terrence Crawford hell. And Gamboa, you know what I mean, is a, you know, he's a warrior, he's tough. And Devin Haney, only 22 years old when he fought him. I know uh, who, Jeff Lacey at 22 wasn't fighting no uh, two, uh, former champions like Gamboa at 22 years old. So I don't think that's a good comparison. And they got two different, let me finish though, because they got two different type of styles. You know what I mean? So um, Devin Haney at 22 fighting top uh, competition. Uh, Linares is a top 10 opponent. So when Devin Haney whitewashes Gant Linares, beats the hell out of him, the people are going to say, oh, he wasn't the same fighter. So we going by uh, rankings. Devin Haney, he beat guys in the top 10 in the WBC, in, the, in, his, in his sanctioning body. Beat the top guys in the WBC tournament. So, I mean, when we say Devin Haney's resume is trash, I feel like that's, uh, that is disrespectful, my brother. To be honest with you, beating undefeated fighters like Alfredo Santiago, Alfredo Santiago, who came from Puerto Rico, who beat Jason Velez, Jason Velez, who just fought against Oscar Valdez, went to 10 rounds with Oscar Valdez. You know what I mean? You talking about um, Alfredo Santiago, you know what I mean? Who was a great amateur with over 150 wins, who was uh, undefeated at the time. You know what I mean? So 
when we talk about Antonio Moran, Antonio Moran, who went 12 rounds with Jose Pedraza, Pedraza who went 12 rounds with Vasily Lomachenko, and Devin Haney was the first man to knock out Antonio Moran, bro. And Don Genie from South Africa, 25 and 0. Devin Haney fought him when he was only, what, 20 years old? 19. So we forget to um, realize how young Devin Haney is and stepping up in competition. So if that's the case, why those top guys don't want to fight him? Why the top guys in a lightweight division are ducking him? Why did Lomachenko vacate his WBC world title and request a franchise belt? Why did Bob Elm say Devin Haney signed with the wrong promoter and then he turned around and make Jose Ramirez versus Maurice Booker? Why did he turn around and make Anthony Joshua versus Pulev and Anthony Joshua is a matchroom fighter just like Devin Haney? Why did he make George Cambosis Jr. versus Lee Selby on the zone then? And Devin Haney signed with the wrong promoter. It's obvious these guys are ducking him. Point blank, period. So here's the thing. I've never refuted. I even said it appears that he's like I agree with you on that aspect. I said that, but you you cannot use Gamboa first off. Like Gamboa was undefeated, I believe, when Terrence Crawford beat him. He was the first one to give him his first L. So that was a completely different fighter in his prime. Yes. Devin Haney is young at 22 years old, youngest current champion. That is true. However, a 40-year-old Gamboa does not compare. Bro, he wasn't 40 years old. Bro, now oh, you're lying. No, hold on. Let he me wasn't 40 years old, bro. Stop undefeated, it. Undefeated, a undefeated Gamboa who fought Terrence Crawford. There are two different paths in their career. They, they don't, they're not comparable. It, but it's, I'm saying it's not the same. that Gamboa just went 12, with, with 12 rounds with Tank with a Tony Keeley's, and nobody has ever went 12 rounds with Tank, not even Leo Santa Cruz. So if Gamboa was so washed up, like you said, why was he able to go 12 rounds with Tank and Jose Pedraza couldn't do it? And uh, uh, what's his name? My boy Leo Santa Cruz got knocked out in six rounds. So why, if Gamboa was so washed, why he didn't get knocked out sooner? And why he couldn't get him back up? You might not like my answer, but I can tell you that. I, I think very well Tank may not have that same punching power at 135 pounds. To be honest with you, I don't think he has that same killer power that he has at 130 and below. I don't think he can knock guys out like he does at 130 and below or bring it up 122-pound fighters to, to knock out. I don't think Tank can do devastating knockout power at 135 pounds. To be honest with you, I think he's too small for the division. And I think when Tank gets in there with a T.O., even Ryan Garcia or a top guy, I think you're going to see that his power is very lacking from what we're used to seeing him do to the smaller men at a weight class down. Because it's a big difference when you're you're jumping weight classes in boxing. Like it doesn't sound like a lot, five pounds, but it's night and day. When you look at five pounds, equivalents to a a person who could be three to four inches taller. That means they could put on 10 to 15 more pounds than what the other person's used to fighting by fight night. Like, it's a big difference. So I don't think Tank has that devastating power at 135 that he's shown to answer that question. But then you okay, talk, so, so with that being... Hold on, hold okay, on. So. But, but you brought up Santiago. Now, yes, Santiago did beat some dudes who were once good. Jason Velez. Let's be specific. He beat Jason Velez. Let me just say this. Hold on, hold on. He beat Jason Velez, who went, ten, who went 10 rounds with Oscar Valdez and was winning rounds against Oscar Valdez. Yo. So people always want to call fighter bums, though. If it's so easy, why, 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 why other people ain't doing it? Why other people ain't getting in the ring? Quick to call a fighter a bum on his resume is trash. Like he fought all bums, bro. That shit is that shit is false and that shit is lies. And so if that's the case, why those top guys like Tiafimo Lopez and Lomachenko don't want no smoke with him and Ryan Garcia is mandatory then. I like you coming back to the ducking case, and I've already conceded whenever I first said this that it does get okay. ducked. I'm not I'm not that is not my argument or my contention. My contention is he's overhyped. Now you come back to Santiago where I was just going. It is true that he did go and have good showings against guys that gave other fighters hard competitive matches. But the problem is, how many fights has Devin Haney had? Devin Haney has 25 fights. Right, right. right. So you go back to Santiago, how many fights did he have? He had 11 fights, but Santiago was also older than him. Uh, uh, Santiago had 11. How many did De Devin Haney have? Because you don't have to go. He, at that time, he was what? I think he had 23 fights. But what is your okay. point, bro? The, the point Devin Haney is much younger than all of these guys. Santiago, experience-wise and professional 
career-wise, only had 11 fights against a guy who had 23, 24, 23. Bro, how many fights did Lomachenko fight before he get, got a title shot? There's a you huge know, you're making excuses. Lomachenko got a title shot in the second fight. Lomachenko beat Gary Russell in his third fight. So what is your argument? No, 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 no. When it comes to Lomachenko, you have a two-time gold medalist. He won gold in many Are you no, serious? No, 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 no. Are you yeah, serious? Because was a great amateur. 150 wins as an amateur. Right, but Lomachenko had multiple goals in different... But now it's multiple goals. goals. I thought we were talking the about the... Well, go ahead, bro. I'm on mute. He, he, he did have multiple goals. He won, like, six different tournaments, including two Olympics. Then he had 398 fights. Only lost to one guy in the amateur and came back and beat that one guy twice in the amateurs. So you're talking about a guy who has the best amateur record in the history of boxing. That's why he was accelerated. Santiago does not compare to a guy like Lomachenko's amateur record on any way. There's not one. Well, it doesn't matter if he ma matches up to Lomachenko. What matters is he was a great amateur with over 150 wins. So you're trying to downplay Devin Haney for beating the guy who was undefeated. And no, 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 no. Because yeah, I'm getting tired of people trying to shit on a young fighter who's only 22 years old resume at the end of the day. And he's calling out the top guys, bro. So what the fuck is he supposed to do? Just because see Fimo Lopez Sr. out here and they avoiding the man. Now people want to run with this bullshit ass narrative. But at the end of the day, those top guys, they don't want to fucking fight him. So let's talk about that. Why those top guys? How is he supposed to prove himself? By fighting the best. Wasn't Lomachenko number one pound for pound? And he avoided that fight. Same thing with Fimo Lopez. You know what I mean? So Blood Haney beating the guys, they put in front of him. Gamboa, you saying, oh, Tank Power ain't the same at 135. That's your opinion. But what we do know, Tank Davis been stopping everybody, point blank, period. And he, he does have power. He does have power, bro. And that's facts. He proved it. So Gamboa, the only man to go 12 rounds with Tank with one leg, and what you said, 40 years old, which he was 38 years old, you know what I mean? And Gamboa did it. So why Pedraza couldn't do it? Why those other guys couldn't do it? Which shows that Gambo still got a lot left in the tank. And we ain't going to say, oh, he was the same fighter that fought against um, Terrence Crawford. I didn't say that. We know he was younger back then. We knew he was undefeated back then. The fact of the matter is nobody beat Gambo the way Devin Haney did. Won every round. No man has ever won every round against Gambo, including Terrence Crawford or Tank Davis. And uh, Gambo fought against uh, Tank Davis. The fight right before Devin Haney. That was his last fight. Yeah, when, when he blew out of it, and he was coming back. He was coming back off an Achilles injury. He <laughs> had the torn Achilles in the in the in the tank fight. He fought with a torn Achilles and still went twelve rounds. You're not listening to what I'm saying. No, go ahead, bro. What you just said was he blew out. I said that earlier when he fought. I, I even said that Devin looked more impressive to me fighting Gamboa than Tank did because Tank, it took him the whole fucking fight when Gamboa blew out his Achilles in the fight in like the second round. So it, it took him the whole fight to finish him when he only had one leg. I already told you that it was more impressive what Devin Haney did to Gamboa. Like I said that, you could rewind and hear what I said. But the fact is you got an old Gamboa who was coming off an injury, blew out his leg and yes, he got outboxed, but that does not refute or dispute the fact that he has never truly fought a top guy. He's about to. He's about to fight Lenares. We're about to see how good he really is because he's going to get in there with some real top-tier competition. He might go in there and whitewash the shit out of him. He might box circles around Lenares. Then the hype is worth it. The hype was good to have. But if he doesn't look good or if he gets his ass whooped, then he has been overrated this whole time for no fucking reason because he doesn't have the fights that deserve the hype that he gets. Yes, I agree. He has been ducked. Yes, I agree. It is very hard to prove yourself when nobody will fight you. It's very hard. But just because guys refuse to fight you or appear to be ducking you doesn't by default mean you can beat those guys. You won't know that till you get in the ring, regardless if they're ducking you or not. The only way to know if you can beat them is to fight them. If they don't fight you, it sucks because you can't prove yourself. But you don't get a win by default because somebody is, quote, unquote, ducking you.
My only point okay, is let's, let's talk about this. Okay, I got you. Money. He is got a you. good fighter. He, he is a good fighter. He's a good Devin Haney gonna put, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Saying, he's a good fighter. He's a good boxer. He looks very talented. He looks like, I think, personally, he's going to be better as he goes up in weight because I think they're making him too small. I think that's why it looks like he lacks power because he's built more muscular, and I think it's taking a lot of his power away from him to stay at 135. I think he'll be better if he goes up to 140, possibly 147. I think he'll look more impressive because then he'll have the skills and more power because I think he just depletes himself a little too much. He's 22, he's young, he can get away with it, but I still think it's sapping his strength. However, my sentiment does not change. Regardless how good I think he looks, until he beats a top-tier fighter, I don't think he deserves the hype that he's getting. I don't think he deserves he could be the next Mayweather until he gets in there and proves it, which he's about to do. That's all I'm saying. Okay, hey, you know, so you said when Devin Haney beats uh, Linares, when Devin Haney goes in there and beats the hell out of Linares, you're going to give the man the credit that he deserves. Is that correct? Yes, just like I would give any fighter that credit. If you go in there and you can beat a top fighter, not a guy who's ranked 20th, not a guy who's ranked 50th, not a guy who's ranked top 100, but a guy who's, because I say Linares is in the top five, maybe six, probably top five. I say probably top five. You could argue maybe six, but no lower than sixth place right now. If he goes in there and whitewashes them, then all the hype he's been getting is justified. But until he does it, I just feel like there's too much hype put behind him because I don't, I don't think he deserves the hype he gets, even though he is a good boxer. Anybody who likes the science of boxing would never call him boring. They would say he's a very good technical fighter. I don't give a fuck if he never gets a knockout. Go in there, dance around the guy, make the guy look stupid and outclass him. I'm cool with that. I like that. I love the way Mayweather fought. But I can't give you the, the, the accolades until you achieve it. Now, if he wins, he deserves it. But if he gets his ass whooped, then people are going to be looking very foolish for hyping him up so much. Okay, look, bro. You know, people want to talk about Devin Haney's power. I remember Devin Haney, you know, knocked out Antonio Moran, a man who's never been knocked out before, who went 12 rounds with Jose Pedraza. And Devin Haney knocked the fuck out of him. Yo, shout us to my boy real quick. Uh, LT in the building. Shout us to LT. Shout us to Major Key Boxing. We're Major Key. Yeah, there we go, Major Key. Who else we got up in here? We're HLD. I, I see somebody said, what's up to HLD? Where you at? Y'all join the panel. Join the panel, y'all. But, yeah, so, you know, when Devin Haney beats up on Jorge Linares, just give the man his credit. You know, not you. I know you already said that. But some people are in the chat. They saying, oh, Linares is old. They're already making excuses. So when Devin Haney beats Linares ass, people already going to make excuses and not to give him the credit, bro. We already see that happening. But see, that, that, that's where I differ from them. I don't care if Haney wins by knockout or a unanimous 12-round decision and he's just got Lenore swinging in the air all night long. That's what he should be doing. Hit and don't get hit. That's really the art of boxing. Like, going in there brawling, that doesn't really impress me. If you're getting knockouts because you're just walking into punches and swinging back and you just out-muscle the guy, that's not that skilled or talented to me. I, like I said, as a former fighter, love the ability to watch a guy get in there, be able to slip out the way, counterpunch, move. When he sees a guy set his feet, he's already out. He's already out. They can't hit him because when they're setting, he's already gone, but he's already tagged him before he left. I love that style of fighting because that's technical ability and that's the ability to be able to read your opponent. However, I just can't hype people up until they deserve it. If he beats Lenares, he deserves all the credit in the world, and anybody who doesn't give him credit is just there's nothing he could do to get credit from them. Tony, they don't, they don't you already Tony, know Tony, they're, not. Tony, you already, they're, gonna, they're just gonna say he's an old Lenares, believe Tony, me. Tony, 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 let me say one thing real quick, and I'll go I back. On you know, it's just like it's just like Bud Crawford on Dawes, Gavalowskis, green beans, green, whatever. He's an Olympic gold medalist, he was supposed to go in there and do something and he didn't but now because you know what i mean now because he lost now he's a bum how is he how is he a bum and he's a gold medalist like niggas in this bum talk you need to really know who you're calling a bum green beans wasn't a bum it's just bud made him look like one I said, okay. so 
Well, well let me. Think. I, I, don't, not, I, I don't even agree. Yeah, I don't think Bud made him look like a bum at all. I, I think Kyle Velasquez early in that fight was really causing Bud a lot of fucking trouble. Like, what's up, HLD? Que onda, carnal? <laughs> Yo, what up, what up, though? LT was good. What's up, H Money? You know, um, Kyle Velasquez was catching Bud Crawford with a lot of counters and beating him early, but then Bud's got that. Bud's a weird thing to me because when Bud got hurt in that fight, he just kicked it up to another level. It's like it's like Bud Crawford gets better the more he gets hurt. Yo, and Tony, that, Tony the, let me that? say this, bro. So uh, I want to address somebody in the chat, bro. This thing, and they still won't give Devin Haney their props if he beats Lenares. Even if he beats him you know better what's, than... You, the, you, ooh, know, ooh, ooh, ooh. you know what's the craziest if he thing, bro? better than Loma, bro? Dude, you know crazy, what's the craziest man. thing, man? Crazy, but crazy, shit, crazy. I don't want to, because I know much, you guys know, bro. Of but the chat, bro. I don't, I don't want to ruin you guys' party, because I know you guys have fun <laughs> talking about this subject so much, man. Yo, but I'm talking over the other dude. All right, all right, so it's all good. It's all good. We got all it. All right, okay, so uh, you know that uh, Bill Haney and uh, what's uh, Senior Lopez have each other's numbers and have gone out drinking, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, they. you guys know that they live in the same city, right? Yep. If they wanted to make the fight, they would have done it already. Both of them. <laughs> so we're just <laughs> wasting energy, creating this chaos, bro. Ah, oh, Jesus. But the, hey, LT, <laughs> this is what the fans want. You know, these brothers got history. Devin Haney, T. Fimo Lopez, two years ago. That's how I found out who T. Fimo Lopez was, right? He was saying... Man, I beat up Devin Haney in sparring. I was like, yo, who is this guy? And then Tiafimo Lopez just exploded on the boxing scene. Then he started knocking out Mason Menard. Then he started doing these backflips. So the first time I found out who he was, he was coming after Devin Haney. So it's it's bad blood. Let me read a Major Key Boxing. Yeah, Everybody bro. Bro, subscribe to Major Key Boxing. My brother Glenn, he said, can't join, join the panel right now. He said, but he said, support. He said, I want to see Haney versus Loma, Kome, and Nakatani. Much respect to the grind, though. Hey, much respect to you, uh, Glenn. You know what I mean? Um, Bob Aram, he said that he wants to see Devin Haney versus Linares, and then he'll make the uh, Tiafimo Lopez fight. So, Linares is, is an opponent that Bob Aram, the promoter, the boss of Tiafimo Lopez, he said he wants Linares. So, I definitely respect uh, the fighters that you mentioned, Loma, Kome, Nakatani. You know what I mean? But also, Linares. There's there's more fighters out there than uh, Kome Nakatani. There's more fighters that's still out there that's better than some of these guys. That's actually ranked higher than Nakatani, which is Linares. But y'all keep going. No, I agree with that. After watching the Verdejo Nakatani fight, I, I find it hard to believe that Nakatani would beat Linares. So if Devin Haney beats Linares, I think that's a much better win than if he was to beat Nakatani, in all honesty. All right, anybody want to debate that? Uh, LT, go ahead, LT. Nah, man, I'm good. Uh, that, uh, that shit, you know what I mean? He he stole my words. <laughs> if I was L L HLD, knows, bro, El sabe su rollo, eh? so where's HLD at? I don't see him in the oh, chat. Oh, that's not HLD. What's this guy's name? The one that has no. Oh, Tony, Tony reviews. He must, oh, he Tony might, reviews, man. I tell HLD to pull up over here, man. If you could talk to him, tell him to join the panel one of these days. He's welcome. I All welcome right, everybody. Sure. Man. Listen, I welcome everybody over here. You could be a Tiafimo Lopez fan. Come to the panel. It's cool. I think Tiafimo Lopez is a great fighter. I'm not taking anything away from Tiafimo Lopez. I just want to see the fight between Devin Haney and Tiafimo Lopez because this is what boxing needs, man. We need this fight. For sure, for sure. For sure. Yo, uh, so. What you think about the fight tomorrow, Chocolatito versus Juan Francisco Estrada, um, LT? I'm going with Estrada. What about you? Hey, I'm going with Estrada too, bro. I saw his last uh, Chocolatito, Chocolatito's interview. He said that on the one on the zone, he was like, I already did what I'm supposed to do. So that gives me, uh, you know what I mean? For sure. He says, for my legacy, he, like in another words, he said, like, my legacy is already set, so. And, what about and, and Estrada, I think he's still hungry for that revenge, you know, I mean, for that rematch, you know, for, you know, set set the score right. So, yeah, so I'm thinking uh, Estrada has more in the tank right now, more ambition, too. So, what about hey, you? Um, 
Muddy, Mr. DeZone. What's up, L Dog? What's good? Damn, bro. We got a war zone in the chat. You know, the, the panel, though. What's up to the panel? Hey, I got Estrada, but I'm rooting for Chocolatito. Oh, okay. Well, why you want Chocolatito to win? What is it about him? Like, you know, you think uh, this man is a, a legend. Do you want to see the, the legend come back and uh, unify the division? Do you think Chocolatito still got it left? Does he still got it, got it in the tank? Does he still got what it takes to beat somebody like Estrada, who's young and strong? Or is Chocolatito at the end of his career? Hey, man, listen, I like uh, I like Chocolatito's style, bro. Chocolatito, in my opinion, is one of the best boxers in the world, technically. And I like to watch his fights. Like One thing you can't say about Chocolatito is that he's a boring fighter. Chocolatito None of them is, are, a, bro. is a very Neither. exciting fighter. Now, Estrada, I like Estrada, but I, I mean, to me, Chocolatito, I've, you know, I've been a fan of him for a while, so I'm going to uh, continue to support him, and I really want to see Chocolatito versus Ioka, but, uh, you know, it, I, I don't really care too much who wins, but I kind of want to see Chocolatito win so that, you know, just the comeback story. Everyone likes a comeback story. Yeah, but people better stop putting respect on Nakatani. Didn't nobody give Nakatani a chance against Rodeo and Rodeo? Oh God was... damn it, bro! When did we get? When did, how no, did we get because that? no, H Money asked me a question about if I want to debate about Nakatani, and I'm debating about the question Nakatani, H Money asked me. Nakatani, he, he came is back overrated. and he got. But believe me, whoever came back from Vadejo, he knocked them out. He knocked Nakatani down twice, and then Nakatani still came yeah, back let and me, knocked them out. Let me tell out. you this. Nakatani, you gotta respect Nakatani, that though. As a, if you're a true boxing fan, you will respect that. Yo. The man got up. Usually, people give up. Nakatani didn't, and he ended up stopping for day home. Nobody, Nakatani, nobody picked. Did you pick him? Who, who, who did you pick? Who literally, but who did you pick? Who did you pick? He stopped him. It don't matter. He stopped him. But who did you pick? Who who did you pick? I picked Verdejo, but he knocked him out. But let me say this. Nakatani knocked out a guy who got knocked out by a bum. And Fortuna knocked out that bum that knocked out Verdejo. So let me let me say this bro, right now. Losing Nakatani to a bum doesn't make overrated. you a bad fighter, bro. Yes, it but, does. I mean, Bernard Hopkins lost to a bum. Eldo, are we going to get upset at Bernard Eldo, Hopkins? Eldo, 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 if you lose to a bum... Is that show yeah, you okay. Well, well my kids lost to a bum as well. Like, uh, a lot of fighters, you know, they yep. sometimes lose or they don't do the best in one fight, man. It's, uh, you know, I don't judge a fighter on their their losses. I judge a fighter on their accomplishments. That's how I judge a fighter. Hey, you know what, l -Dog? Even Manny Pacquiao was getting knocked out by bums in Thailand. You know what I mean? I believe in the Philippines when he first yeah. started. It's all about so, experience at the end of the day. Some fighters are late bloomers. Bernard Hopkins, remember, he came out of the penitentiary and turned up to a professional fighter. So he had he didn't have that type of experience. So as Bernard Hopkins got older in his career, as he started winning uh, fights, he started gaining experience, which made him a better fighter. Even Marvin Hagler was a late bloomer. Took some losses early in his career. I thought he got robbed in a couple of fights. You know what I mean? But Marvin Hagler, he you Sugar know really Ray Leonard, biggest one. Exactly. Sugar Ray Leonard. I thought Hagler won that fight, but even before that, D Hodges, he got robbed in a couple of fights, you know. So it happens in boxing. It's you know, a loss really doesn't mean anything in boxing. Nowadays it do because these fighters are protecting their O's, you know what I mean? And once they lose, they're not the same. But you know, back in the day, if you could take a loss, you know what I mean, and it, it's nothing. You know, it's it's how you bounce back. Even Mayweather said it. A true champion can take a loss and bounce back like Anthony Joshua did. You feel me? Well, it is very hard to stay undefeated if you're always fighting the best of the best when they're at their best. And that's what classic fighters used to do. Like, they were always fighting the best of the best when they were at their best, not when they were on a decline or not when things were in their favor. So it's a lot easier to lose even if you were considered the best because you're always fighting the second best. But, um... As far as um, Chocolatito Estrada goes, like I, I think that's more important than Nakatani because that's one of the biggest fights in boxing. Um, I would say eight years ago when they fought the first time, I, I feel like 
if it would have been a super fly weight like it is now, Estrada would have beat Chocolatito. It was a close fight in flyweight, but if they would have fought in super flyweight even back then, I think Estrada would have got him. So my pick is Estrada by unanimous decision. I think it goes all the rounds. Um, how I see it going is the first seven, eight rounds, I think is going to be fireworks. It's going to be Gonzalez coming forward, Estrada looking to counterpunch. But I think after Estrada gets his stride around the eighth round, the fight's going to slow down a lot to so how it had looked previously. And Estrada's just going to win off of the counterpunching as Chocolatito comes towards him. That, that's how I see it. Unanimous decision, Estrada. I got to go yeah. with Estrada. Hey, uh, L Dog, I think Estrada is younger. At this point, Estrada is the fresher fighter. And now, when you talk about boxing skills, Estrada can box. He got a very good jab. He can, he can make adjustments. One thing about Chocolatito is like he's straight pressure, pressure, pressure. And he takes a lot of punches, man. His last fight, Chocolatito took a lot of punishment. I just I don't think Chocolatito got the defense. We seen Rungs, what's how you say name? Rungs of I, who about to fight right now? He beat the hell out of Chocolatito. You know what I mean? He beat the even though Chocolatito bounced back, he became a champion again. Is you know what I mean? At this point, he gets hit too much for me, L Dog. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll say, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, Estrada, he gets hit a lot as well, though. We got to be real. Now, his defense, it is better than Chocolatito's, but he's not as aggressive as Chocolatito. So that's one thing we got to consider. Absolutely. You know, that's a great point, l Dog. You know, um, we just got to wait and see how the fight turns out, because even... Um, in the last fight, Estrada was in a tough fight, his last one. He got dropped, I believe, a couple of times in that fight. But he got back up to win by knockout. You know, um, it's going to be a war. Either way, you know, you could expect excitement. You could you could expect a lot of punches being thrown by both fighters. You know what I mean? I predict over a 1,000 punches thrown by each fighter tomorrow. I expect a fight of the year candidate tomorrow between between Chocolatito and Juan Francisco Estrada, I think this fight right here will propel uh, Juan Francisco Estrada possibly in the top five pound for pound. He's already in the top ten. Uh, wh where do you rank Estrada right now in your uh, pound for pound list, L Dog? And do you think this win should boost him up a little bit higher, revenging his his first loss? Right now, uh, I got Chocolatito. Number five, pound for pound, and I got Estrada number six. So if he beats Chocolatito, he's number one, pound for pound on my list. He'll have a better resume than Canelo. No, I don't know about number one. I mean, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. To me, Chocolatito, Rungvisite, and Quadras are better wins than Triple G, Kovalev, and uh, Daniel Jacobs. Okay. Lara. You disagree? What about Laura? But that was a long time ago. Yeah. Well, Kodo. Kodo was, uh, wasn't too long ago. Kodo. You know what? I mean, you know, I respect Chocolatito, but I, I, I still think Terrence Crawford and Canelo are the top guys right now. To be, for me. And we can pass it around and get different opinions. But go ahead, Eldar, finish your, your statement, and we go to uh, Tony and get his pound-for-pound pound list. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm putting the winner number one. I think the winner has a better resume than Terrence Crawford, a better resume than Canelo. Uh, it's close, though, with Canelo. Because Estrada, he's got a lot of good wins, man. I'm telling you, Rungvisai was top 10 pound-for-pound. Pound. I got Chocolatito, top 10 pound-for-pound. Quadras is a good fighter. It's all in how you look at it, really. What about you, Tony? Who's on your uh, pound for pound list at the moment? Give me a top three. I was asked this yesterday on another channel, and um, I couldn't remember where I had them placed. It was either five or six, or six or seven, and um, it would be six and seven. I've got Chocolatito number six, and Estrada right behind him at number seven. And whoever wins this, I would bump into my number four spot. My top three are going to be Terrence Crawford at number one, Canelo at number two. I've got to put any Elway at number three because of his freaking beautiful boxing ability. Like the dude, if you, I mean, the Donaire fight was kind of, ah, it was his hardest fight. But other than that, like the, the way that he fights 
is just beautiful to me. And then I will place Chocolatito or Estrada, whomever, in that four spot where I had it reserved for Usyk. So Usyk would be bumped back to fifth, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Hey, somebody made a great comment in the chat earlier. They said, how can people love Usyk as a fighter in his style but criticize Devin Haney? And Devin Haney has a similar style to Usyk with their uh, boxers. And Usyk is not a knockout artist. Usyk is not getting knockouts like that. But, you know, Usyk, he gets praise. Why not Devin Haney? I don't understand it. You know, um, they call Devin Haney born. I mean, if that's the case, you should call Tyson Fury born. You should call Usyk born. Do you know what I mean? Call Lomachenko born because he has a similar style, which uh, Lomachenko is a boxer. You know, a slick boxer, but everybody praises his footwork. I, I, I like Lomachenko's style. I never said nothing about it. So I like Devin Haney's style. I think they both great, phenomenal boxers. You know what I mean? But it seems like Devin Haney gets receives hate for his style. Floyd Mayweather received hate. Fighters like Demetrius Andrade, they call him boring. But if Andrade, you know what I mean? I don't know what it is. Eldar, do you think it got something to do with race? You know what I mean? It, yeah. It's race got something. To, I'm going to just ask you because I don't know. Yes, uh, definitely. Anyone who says they like Tyson Fury but they don't like Devin Haney, like because of the styles, is probably just favoring Fury because he's white. Me personally, I think Tyson Fury is even more boring than Devin Haney, to be honest. You got to look at some of these fights that Fury's had, right? <laughs> Fear, like his fight against Klitschko is one of the most boring fights of all time. Uh, Andrade, I find him pretty boring, but I actually like Erislandi Lara. Now, Lara, he can be boring, but he's had some exciting fights. And, uh, you know, he's a good boxer, but I'll say Usyk. Usyk has had a lot more exciting fights than Devin Haney. He's, his fight against Bradis was a fight of the year contender. His fight against... Uh, Michael Hunter was another good fight. The fights against, you know, Glavatsky and uh, uh, Bellew, Gassiev. they were also good fights. Gassiev was, uh, that was a masterclass, man. It wasn't the most exciting, but it, it was a masterclass against, uh, you know, for Undisputed. W when have we ever seen Every an Undisputed masterclass like that? Well, it's similar similar to how Devin Haney fights then. A master class, how Devin Haney gave Gamboa, and he won every round. You know, I mean, of course, Usyk fight was a undisputed fight, but just a similar style, I would say. Similar. So Sometimes, yeah, but this is the thing, man. you got to look at the level of opponents. If it's a master class against a top-level opponent, i got to give you credit because you're just that good. But if it's a master class against a Gamboa, kind of like how... Uh, you know, Usyk was fighting Witherspoon. That was kind of boring to me, bro. I like and, it. Uh, I like yeah. it. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Another, bo another boxer who I think is kind of boring is Bevo, man. Like, Bevo. I love it. Bro. That's my favorite style of fighting right there. Like, you know, like Bevo, jab, move. He destroyed uh, Joe Smith Jr. You know what I mean? Yeah, he destroyed yeah. him. Beat the hell out of him. Gave him a master class. To be honest with you, l Dog. I think that is the best style in boxing. You know what I mean? That type of style to hit and not be hit a Mayweather type of style. You know what I mean? I think that's the most effective style. That's the most avoided type of style in the sport, to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest, man. The, the style of boxing, I do like hit and not get hit. Like you got to be technical to some point. But to me, I don't like it when you're like a back foot fighter, man. I like front foot fighters. I like uh, Loma, Usyk when he was at cruiserweight. He's not really a front foot fighter anymore, but he was a front foot fighter cruiserweight. I like Chocolatito, man. I like uh, Errol Spence. I like Javante Tank Davis. These guys have exciting fight styles. Now, yeah, they get hit more than Haney, but they also land more punches than Devin Haney, and they throw more punches. That's what I kind of like. Kind of sloppy though. Their styles are sloppy. I don't. I mean, I don't like the fact that Earl Spence takes too many punches. I don't like the fact that Earl Spence doesn't have very good head movement. We seen that in the Sean Porter fight. You know, a Tank. We seen him get pieced up by Gamboa. We seen Gamboa give Tank two black eyes. You know, hey, we he, seen he almost knocked Tank down with that three piece. That was actually a pretty good three piece. Like, uh, 
when he hit him off the clinch, that shit was good. Yeah, I don't, you know, in, in the school of thought of boxing that I follow, the school of thought that I study, hit, getting hit like that is frowned upon. You know what I mean? There's nothing cool with taking punishment like that. We seen fighters like Riddick Bowe have brain damage, Meldrick Taylor, Gerald McClellan. You know what I mean? This is not the way to go. Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? Freddie Roach. You see him because of the sport of boxing. I think the best style is the boxer. I mean, boxer puncher, of course, a boxer that could punch as well. That's what I like. I like boxer punches, man. I like the, uh, you know, the Canelos, the Kodos, the Triple Gs, those guys. Those no. are the, that's, the, that's the kind of style I like, man, where they're not, you know, just going in there brawling like a Madonna type. I mean, that's cool, but, you know, that to me is like a, it, it looks like you're missing something. That's what I would say. If you fight like a Madonna or a Salido, it's like you're missing something. But I tell you, Haney could box off the back foot if he want to. You see, Gamboa, Haney does what you do. If you come forward, of course I'm going to step back and just punch the shit out you. Now, if you a step back, Haney knows how to take a step forward and still connect to you. Yo, I respect that young boy's skill set, know what I'm saying? And I just, He's I watched him, he can fight off the back foot, too. And he can he come forward. He just he, he, he yeah. chooses not to come forward. He loves you to come in because you're going in to knock him out while he's piecing you up. And like dude said earlier, as soon as yeah, he, he piece you up, as soon as he beats you up, as soon as you start to hit him, he move. So he's not there for that shot. Yo, you got yo, his skill is crazy to be his age, dude. Imagine by the time Haney's 25, 26. I'm just saying, when you're that good in the like Mike Tyson. He was world champion at what? Heavyweight champion at 21 or some young age. And he still went in there and knocked people out. Like, Haney still got time to grow. And right now, dog, he's the fucking man. And he's still a baby compared to the other fighters. He's a baby to Lars. Lars was boxing when he probably was still in the amateurs. You know what I'm saying? So, got to respect Haney. He could fight off the back foot or the front. I watched him. I watched him come forward and beat people up. Like Gamboa, he wasn't fighting off the back foot. He was stepping forward. Gamboa throw a punch, he'll move and hit Gamboa. And I can't remember the other opponent, but he was beating him up on the back foot. Like, backing up, bow, 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 back up, bow, 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 back up, move to the side. Bow. Yo, you got to respect Haney's style, yo. And it's unique. I mean, it's not a I mean, Floyd style. It's not a Parnell style. Like Bill Haney said yesterday on Punch, on Punch's show, we got our own style. Don't compare our style to nobody else's because we got our own style. And I got to agree with Bill with that. Haney has mad dimensions and he ain't even show it all yet because he ain't had to. We'll see. He once, he, once, he, no, once he has to bring out his dimensions and then we'll know. But he's so good. He don't have to go in the tool bag. He beats you up with his regular tools. He don't got to change the nail on the. Uh, the nail for the uh for the us uh, um whatever you don't gotta change the tip drill to change the screw no he stayed with his same tools and I'm just waiting to see somebody bring it out of him but if they don't he's just that good hey man I was only 22 like, years old man when it comes to Devin Haney hey. he's he's what you call a pure boxer okay he'll box you off the back foot he'll make you miss but to me, it just leaves a lot to be desired. I want to see someone break someone down. I want to see them break someone, man. I want to see Devin Haney go forward and uh, break his opponent down. I don't want to see this jab, move, he jab, broke down, move. He broke down Gamboa. What are you talking about? That You don't right. call that a break. He broke Gamboa down. No, oh, he God, didn't. Even, he though, even, though, even though he didn't, even they, he didn't knock him out, he broke him down. He outboxed him, bro. He outboxed him. And that's him, breaking okay. down. If you really know nah, boxing, come on, bro. When break you're him out down box means you drop him. Break him down means you stop no. him. That's what Lock breaking down means. Break him down. Let me step in, D. I just because breaking down, it, it can mean different things. It, it it can means you broke him down and you stopped him and you dropped him, or break him down means. You could, uh, you know, go to the body, you know, beat the hell out of him, give him an ass whooping, dominate the fight, break him down, which get get on the inside, you know what I'm saying, and uh, put your punches together, land the harder shots, dominate that action. That's what breaking somebody down is. Going to the body, you know what I mean, picking your shots and landing hard shots. That's breaking them down. 
and Gamboa was broken down at the end of that fight. Nah, Gamboa, man. He was, he was, bro. That's your opinion. I, you know what? I'm gonna put some of the blame on Gamboa because that dude did way too much holding, man. That it, it he took he. Away. They took a point away from him for holding. Yeah, he was spoiling the fight as well, bro. If he had stopped holding, it probably wouldn't have been so boring. And that's similar with Santiago. Santiago yeah. was, was holding a lot, man. Like, uh, he dropped him. He dropped him. Let me go real quick. Because Devin Haney, he dropped Santiago in that fight. And now Earl Spence, he broke down Mikey Garcia in that fight. But he didn't knock him down or knock him out. So, like, like D. Hodge just said, it's different ways of fighting, different styles. Haney showed us plenty of styles. And Devin Haney, he does resemble Floyd Mayweather with his shoulder roll. And even Floyd Mayweather Sr. said Devin Haney was the next Floyd. Also, he fights like Andre Ward, straight out of Oakland. The same hometown as Andre Ward. Virgil Hunter, the mentor of Bill Haney, who taught him a lot of things. So, Devin Haney fights like Sugar Ray Leonard as well. You know what I mean? So Devin Haney got a lot of similarities to fighters, but he's his own fighter, like his dad said. So you know what I mean? I see, I see glimpses. I see uh, you know, fl flashes of a Sugar Ray Leonard. I see flashes of Floyd Mayweather and Andre Ward in them. And I work with the team. And yeah, we gonna start getting these knockouts. You know what I mean? We gonna go for the finish, and that's always the intentions. Always going to the fight, looking for the knockout. Tiafimo Lopez said he was gonna knock out Loma. He didn't get the knockout, but he wanted it. Devin Haney said he was going to knock out Gamboa. He wanted the knockout. He didn't get it, even though he had a broken hand coming off a of shoulder surgery. But it's all good. We're going to see with, in a Linares fight. You know what I mean? We're going to see what's going on. You know, hopefully that fight is going to be announced very soon, bro. Or the Lomachenko fight. If Lomachenko stops running and ducking, bro. I'm going to be honest with you, and I've said it several times. I do not want to see him fight Lomachenko next. I, I would rather see him fight Lomachenko after Lomachenko comes back and gets a win. I don't want to see him beat a guy who just got beat because I feel like that takes away from a great win that should be a great win. So I feel like the smart move, Linares. Beat Linares. If Loma can win and Teofimo Lopez doesn't want to fight him, then fight Lomachenko coming off of a win. So... You know, there's no excuses to be made. He's back. He's 100%. No shoulder problems. Surgery's done. He won a fight. Then he got whooped by Devin. If, if Devin's going to beat him, beat him after he wins a fight. So I think Lenares is the much better move. In okay. my so Loma needs a tune-up. Loma needs a tune-up, no, pretty no, much. Not, not the fact that he needs a tune-up. I just think it looks better to beat Loma coming off of a win than it does to beat him coming off of a loss. So you you request the tune up that'd be better. You know what I mean? I okay. I, I understand. I understand. In, in, okay. In a sense, a tune up, but Loma doesn't have to take a tune up. He could fight a a legitimate fighter and win. I don't care who he beats. I don't care if he beats a lift driver. I don't care if he fights Nagatani and beats him. The fact is, I just think it looks better on Devin Haney if he beats him coming off of a win versus beats him coming off of a loss. That's all I'm saying. Um, he's gonna need a tune up. Like, He's going to he need, he need a tune-up. And Bob Aram know that. That's why they're not going to make this fight happen next. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I mean, I respect Lomachenko as a fighter. You know, uh, Tiafima Lopez, he beat him. You know, hopefully Lomachenko step in there with Devin Haney. You know, hopefully he finally let, let his nuts hang. You know what I mean? And really make that fight happen and give the people what they want. But one thing about Tiafima Lopez, he's a very good fighter. He's a great fighter. But he's not really acting like a champion right now, l Dog. You know, he doesn't want to give Lomachenko a rematch. He doesn't want to give the fans what they want, the Devin Haney fight. You know what I mean? He wants to fight people people like George Cambosis. You know, he said he wanted to move up to 140, but the winner of Josh Taylor versus Jose Ramirez, they're moving up to welterweight to fight Terrence Crawford. So yeah. so who, what is Tiafimo Lopez going to do? No, no, I, I get right. Uh, you know I what, Tio? What is he going to do? No, no, hold let, on. Let me, let me hold tell on. you real quick no. what uh, he's going to do, man. He's hey, going to move. Hold on, hold on. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that um, Ramirez or Taylor, if, if T.O. will move up and fight them next, they'll fight him. They won't go to 147 for Bud. They'll, they'll definitely fight him first. I guarantee you that. But um, said that, bro. But the I the dude said that. that. I'm telling you what they said. Uh, Bob ain't going to give T.O. the fight. Go ahead. I, I guarantee you they'll go for T.O. first. And Bob is not on T.O. He's not even giving a fight. And the winner said they're going to move up. But go ahead, Tony. Explain. I, I, I'm just telling you that that sounds good, but I guarantee you 
if Theo really does go up to 140, they'll stick around for one more fight to fight him because he did beat Lomachenko, and that will look very impressive if they're the guy that beats Theo when he moves up. So they'll try to catch that, and they'll look at that as an easier fight too because he's a 135er coming up in his first fight to go for undisputed because essentially that's what it'll be because the winner will be undisputed between Ramirez and Taylor. But what I wanted to say before we get too far away from it, and then Eldor, you could have it, not to cut you off like I did, but I want to say this. As far as the next Mayweather goes, I understand people talking about Devin Haney being there, but I personally think Shakur Stevenson is more than likely going to fill that bill a lot better than Devin Haney, in my opinion. I think Stevenson is much better than all the young guys when it comes to ability. I just want to throw his name out there because I think I think he's the best one for all the young guys, period, hands down, without a question. Yo, Shakur Stevenson, he's a very good fighter. We respect him, of course, but, you know, I'm just telling you what uh, Floyd Mayweather Sr. said, you know what I mean? And he's the trainer, the father of, of, of Floyd. And he said Devin Haney is a carbon copy of my son. And he would know better than anybody. And keep in mind, Shakur Stevenson is a southpaw. You know what I mean? Uh, Devin Haney is orthodox like Floyd. So, I mean, I feel like Devin Haney is more like Floyd Mayweather. He's the same height, exactly. He's from the same camp. He's been down there with the Mayweather since eight years old. And uh, one more thing, Shakur Stevenson reminds me of uh, Pernell Whitaker, who also right. was a southpaw, was a great fighter. And right. I think Shakur Stevenson is a great fighter. Right. So what I mean, yeah, that's what I would say. What I mean by the next Mayweather is I don't mean stylistically the next Mayweather. I mean, achievement wise, the next Mayweather to be able to go up four or five divisions to be able to beat 23 world champions and not take a loss. That's what I mean by the next Mayweather, the next guy to really fill the bill, not to get in the ring and look like him. I just feel like when it's all said and done, Shakur how he's looking to me at this moment, and I could be wrong, but I think he has more longevity than any of these guys, and I think he will do what Mayweather did by being multi-divisional champion and more weight classes than any of these guys will. That's why you got to give it to Canelo, no matter call him a drug cheat or whatever. You got to give it to him. Like He only got one loss, and that was the Floyd, but everybody else... If you really think about it, go look at his box rec. He beat mad champions. He beat at least 10 champions. Canelo, to get where he's at, to get all them belts, he had to beat over 10 champions. So no matter what anybody say, you beating champions. Don't matter. The champion ain't a bum because he beat the person that had the belt before him. So you can't call the champ a bum just because he go in there and get whitewashed. So, like, boxing is crazy, dog. A lot of casuals. Hey, but to me, the... Uh... Stylistically, the closest thing to Pretty Boy Floyd is Tiafimo Lopez. I think his style is the closest thing to Pretty Boy Floyd. And I think he's the best of these young fighters uh, around that weight class. Him and uh, him and Tank, I think, are the best. Uh, but now when it comes to Tio, he's probably going to move up and just collect the vacant belts when once he's beat Cambosis. I think the winner of the undisputed fight will vacate and fight Crawford, while Tio goes and fights, uh, you know, Zapata, maybe a Pedraza, try and grab those belts. I think that's what will happen. But like I said, though, like y'all gotta respect Haney. He hasn't lost. He hasn't lost a round on no judges' scorecards, and we no, lost. Right. He it. has like, lost he... a round. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say. I don't remember seeing this. He, he, all the fights I watched, he dominated. I couldn't, even give, Who I couldn't, even, give, I couldn't even give the person a challenge Who round. Who are you talking about? No, I was saying Devin Haney. He never lost a round in boxing. He's never lost a round his whole career. Yeah, he has. That's Again, what I was saying. That's what I was telling him. Devin Haney never yeah, lost a round. He, he's lost rounds. He never in his whole career, bro. Yeah, he has. You can check the scorecards on some of his fight. He lost the rounds it, it to Hector Garcia. Right. It don't mean it's right. He won every round in right. every fight. He, he, he lost he rounds to Hector Garcia. He and lost how, rounds how is, how is to Juan Lopez Carlos Burgos. Like Floyd. How is Tiafimo Lopez like Floyd when he's flat footed? <laughs> I've never seen Floyd get out of okay. box the way Tiafimo Lopez did by Nakatani. 
who beat the hell out of Tiafimo Lopez in that fight. And Lomachenko nodded his face up. He ran out of gas. He's more okay, like bro, Canelo. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez is more like Canelo. He's not okay, like so Floyd, bro. Here's the thing. Uh, Floyd Mayweather was lumped up by Castillo. He was lumped up by Maidana. It doesn't matter. No one jumped up in weight. Tiafimo Lopez still ain't moved up in weight. And he fought. But guess uh, what? Fought, let, let, me let, me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Because he fought, he fought against uh, against Luis, Jose Luis Castillo with a torn rotator cuff and gave him an immediate rematch. Why Tiafimo Lopez didn't give Momachenko an immediate rematch like Floyd did Castillo? Because he's not like Floyd. And he's ducking smoke. That's what it is, bro. bro. Hey, come he on, got man. Goal, bro. Even Floyd Duck fighters, bro. Floyd nah, Duck. Come uh, on, bro. Stop with the games, bro. Floyd Duck, 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 like Floyd. He ain't like Floyd. He don't fight nothing like Floyd, bro. Yeah, I think he, he fights like, like him. Canada. He uses the shoulder roll. He's got explosive power. He's got great uh, athleticism. Yeah. You know, given Haney, he, Dude, he doesn't fight many, like Floyd. Why everybody compare to Why everybody Devin Haney to Floyd and nobody compare Tiafimo Lopez to Floyd. Nobody can play. I'm gonna tell you why. What? It's because Floyd looks like uh, Floyd Mayweather, and, and he's oh. been around the Mayweathers, so everyone compares him to it. But Tiafimo <laughs> Lopez, bro, at the end of the day, it doesn't have nothing to do with race because Devin Haney is black. No, ain't got nothing to do with that. Tiafimo Lopez, let me finish it. Tiafimo Lopez is a flat-footed fighter. He came back like Floyd, not even on his best day. He's flat-footed. Hey, I already. I think he can box like Floyd, man. Like pretty boy. Why he's getting outboxed by Nakatani in those fights, and Lomachenko was able to piece him up. Okay, why, why, bro? He wasn't getting outboxed by Nakatani. Yes, he was, if you yes, want to do was, that, bro. A lot of people I hate Teal. That's why I hate Teal. Why can't y'all give me credit? He beat Nakatani. Like, I'm going to give Teal hard fight. I watched the fight. I and watched the fight. Teo, uh, and that's what I was because he showed his grit in that fight. Not, not like Floyd, bro. That's Cap. You're a Cap. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah, not Floyd, Tani was getting, on, like Floyd, Floyd was getting getting lumped up by Emmanuel Augusta. Lopez is more of a puncher than Floyd was, bro. Timo Lopez is a hey, puncher. Boy He's a was a fighter, okay, bro. This time no, said, he wasn't. Why Floyd only had one knockout at lightweight? Floyd only had one knockout at lightweight against Philip and Duke. So are you serious? Bro, okay. what weight class did he fight? Yeah, people are saying Floyd didn't have power. You never hear people say Tiafimo Lopez don't have power. Tiafimo Floyd is a boxer. Tiafimo Lopez is flat footed. He's not like Floyd, bro. Not like Floyd. Bro, that's one thing. Okay, not like guess what? Listen, they go ahead, Tony. Floyd. He's nothing like fucking Floyd. He's nothing. Let me ask this question right now. <laughs> I don't want nobody to over talk. I'm just going to ask the question. Um, I don't know who the other guy is with the the icon because I can't read his name. But first, H1, okay, okay. what is what is Floyd Mayweather known the most for? If you just was going to say one thing, defense. Did yeah, defense. Okay, defense. Okay. You talk about the what footwork, about the, IQ, about boxing guy? skills. No, 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 no. So we got two people that said That's defense. Right I don't know who the two were that said defense. Don't make sense. They said no. I would say defense. Like yeah, Catherine Shu. No, stop there. You know, uh, no, no, no. Counter punching. We're, we're, we're not going to talk about any of that. Just listen I'm to what I'm going to say. Make some right if you ask crazy. somebody who was a casual, right, what they thought about Mayweather, the first thing that comes to mind is defense. One of the best, if not the best, defensive fighter to ever do it. Here's the fucking problem with Tio. He gets hit way too much in the face to be considered a Floyd Mayweather Jr. Even in the Lomachenko fight where Loma didn't even let his hands go to the seventh round, Lomachenko could not miss him once he started throwing punches. Every punch he threw hit Tiafima Lopez. Nakatani could not miss him. He kept hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. Then you go to even Comey, where he knocked out Comey in the second round. I believe it was, if memory serves right. Even before he knocked out Comey, Comey was hitting him with every shot he let go. Tio's defense is nowhere near a Mayweather uh, level. Like, they're not even comparable. It's like somebody in elementary school. Exactly, bro. That's, that's a bad comparison, comparison bro. I, I, I think Tio, he got good comparison. defense. It's not bad defense, but it's definitely not the best. But I will say Haney doesn't have anywhere near the offensive skills that Mayweather or or Tio has. Like to me, uh, Tio is 
Geo is more of a pretty boy, whereas uh, Haney is more of a, a money Mayweather or a Brona. So let me say this, L Dog. The least hit and highest accurate puncher in boxing is the same man, and that's Shakur Stevenson. Just like Floyd Mayweather when he fought. Uh, wait, first, of least, all, first of all, L Dog, the least that's a bad is Kazuto Ioka. The least hit is Kazuto Because Adrian Broner is flat footed, bro. See, Fimo Lopez, if anything, is more like Adrian Broner, flat footed, trying to use the Mayweather shoulder roll, but never trained with the Mayweathers. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he's more like Andre Berto. Tifimo Lopez is more like Adrian Broner. If anything, if you want to compare him to a, another black fighter that uses the shoulder roll, which would be like Andre Berto and Adrian Broner. He's nowhere near him. He gets hit. He gets hit way too much. His defense ain't, ain't even on the level. And he's flat-footed, bro. That's a weak comparison. Bro, I, I would say, you know what? You know who uh, Haney does fight like now? He fights like Caleb Plant. Okay, he uses the shoulder roll, but he runs, dude. He's he's runs bro, from he his runs. opponent. He Did you call that running when Lomachenko was doing that, bro? I know yes. you like to yes. hate on Haney. I know you be calling and hating on Haney, bro. Like, I know, no, no, bro. We ain't going to do that if you just want to troll and disrespect Devin Haney. We ain't doing that today, bro. We're not Lomachenko doing that, bro. He ran from Lopez. He ran. It's true. It's true. We ain't doing that, bro. <laughs> Hey, hold on, bro. You're going to get us copyright. That's the only time I will co sign with Ronnie was that Mikey Garcia, Earl Spence, fucking Mikey went into flight mode and kept running. But to, to fight off the back foot, jab people, move around them when they move towards you, that's not running. That's how boxing goes. That's how Bro, that's is. running. That's doing it's a boring running. ass fight, man. That's called boxing, bro. That's called using footwork. That's the same thing that Tyson Fury does. That's the same thing that Ali Floyd Mayweather did, bro. Pernell yeah, Whitaker. That's, that's not Fury. That's called ring generalship, bro. Right. You said what did you say? Ring generalship. Ring generalship. What did you say? What Chocolatito does and what Golovkin does. Cut off the ring and pressure you. But you can't huh? forget about Emmanuel Augustus, though. He yeah, had a beautiful defense. Oh, that Augustus dude was a problem, dog. He was a Parnell Whitaker with power. So that's I'll what you call. It, that's what oh, you call come boxing. On, man. Let's not. Let's he was. Not give him that yo, much if you praise. go watch, yo, you must be a casual because go watch his fight. He was yo, the yo, drunken yo, boxer. Emmanuel Augusta have his hands down and you're swinging at him and he's completely man. missing and man. then he'll hit you. He's dancing. No, you're, you're, like just, you're just a casual. You. You're just a casual. Hey, Daniel, you can't say that. They call him a drunken boxer. Go watch a menu. Hey, we can't hear you, H Money. We can't hear you. Your mic is all muffled. I, 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 Daniel, 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 that that dude had, had a, a unique, weird looking style. Emmanuel Augustus was a really unique style of fighter. Like I, I like how he fights. If you don't know who he is, go look him up. You'll be impressed. Uh, y'all hear me? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, I mean they all good fighters, man. Tiafimo Lopez is a great fighter. Devin Haney a great fighter. Lomachenko a great fighter. Ryan Garcia, Tank. You know, you got to respect all these fighters at the end of the day. That's what it's all about, man. And hopefully the fights can happen. We want to see the fights happen, bro. And I know Devin Haney, he wants to make the fight. Tiafimo Lopez is not acting like a champion right now. He doesn't want to give Lomachenko a rematch. He doesn't want to fight Devin Haney. That's the that's what the fans want. You know, I don't, I don't respect it, bro. At the end of the day, he talking about the four kings. His dad's the only king, but... All those guys fought each other. He's not even trying to fight no, none of the other guys. You don't hear him trying to fight Devin Haney, bro. He's trying to do something else. So it is what it is at the end of the day. I, I, I think he's a great fighter, but I don't respect the way that he's moving. I can tell you that much. And I told yeah, you, he I killed me. You, he killed me. Even though I had to eat Loma Crow on every channel because I picked him, and I definitely didn't think by decision. I said... Yo, Loma gonna, if it go to decision, the judges are gonna give it to Loma. But I was completely wrong and they gave it to Teal. So I'm still eating that crow. But at the end of the day, we won't know. And 
till they fight each other. So we can all make all the speculations, but if they never fight, we'll really never know. But I just think like skill set at 135, Haney's is like problem for anybody. Yeah, hey, I think Haney, like, uh, you know, he's definitely uh, an okay fighter, but I got to see more from a man because me personally, I just don't like that style. I mean, but you like Lomachenko style, and Lomachenko did this. He he boxes. Lomachenko is considered a master boxer. Lomachenko wasn't knocking everybody out. It's cool. You you don't you don't have to like your style. At the end of the day, if the style working, that's what it's all about. It's about winning. So you don't have to like it as long as it works against you know uh, Tiafimo Lopez and Tank Davis. That's what it's about, bro. Every you know everything is not for you to like. You might like something different. You know what I mean? I understand. I respect it, though. That's your opinion. I you got to respect your opinion. You feel me? I yeah, think you yeah. got a great At the end of the day, I really think, like, I know, don't hate me or whatever, but I really think Tank versus, I know it's not undisputed, but, like, if Teal's being a hoe and move up to 54 or 40, whatever he's going to move up to, then Tank versus Haney would be actually a 50-50 a, 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 a kind of, you know what I'm nah. I, I think Haney, I think Haney got the right style to beat a, a Tank Davis. But it's the point though, Haney like, never uh, been. I, I think, but Haney think, never been. Haney never been hit because he's that bro, smooth. So if Tank don't connect on him, of course. But we, if bro, what Tank do you is, mean? Every fighter gets hit. No, he, he gets jabbed. He gets like little bro, hits. You know? Who Haney, is, who, got, Haney who, was getting lumped up by Hector Garcia. But who stumbled him? Who punched him and made him stop in his tracks? Who, who did that? Nobody. Never mind. Stop it. Bro, I'm chill, bro. You, you just want to hate on this man. Bro, you know this is a Devin Haney channel, bro. And you over here just hating on this man. Yesterday you called them a bitch and all of that, bro. That shit ain't cool, L Dog, my nigga. You know I fuck with this nigga. And you out here trying to troll my peoples, bro. Those is my peoples, bro. Chill out with that, my nigga. Hey, I thought this was a boxing channel. It is a boxing channel, bro. But you, what you doing going around calling people bitches? Professional fighters, though. But it's cool, man. That's how you want to act. It's cool, bro. It's, you know, it's free smoke. It's free nah, smoke, bro. I, I'm going to admit this, bro. That was wrong of me because... You know, I, I know you said the same thing, but you apologized and you said that was wrong, so I'm going to say the same. You know, I ain't going to call yeah. him a bitch, but... Exactly, you right. You right, bro. So, so I'm going to apologize to the Haney's for that because, you know, that was just... uh, That was just talking reckless, man. You know, when it comes to... uh, Yeah, yeah you got to respect You got to respect my relationship with them folks, bro. You know bro, what I mean? I, I mean, bro, I understand. Bro, L-Dog, I love you to death, but, like... A lot of people in the chats on the channels I go to that you be on, they're starting not to like you because they say you get too drunk and you get mean. And then you was calling Bill Haney all types no, of bad words. And no, you called Bill Haney. I was on the show with Punch. You called Bill Haney mad bad words and then you apologized before you left. You can't do that because some people might not accept your apology, drunk or not. You can't do that. You can't disrespect nobody that's a guest that knows boxing. He's Bro, a promoter. Come on, man. This is but this no, is I give you no. I told you, I told you last night that you know, I'm just letting you know, don't do that because there's gonna be some people that don't care if you was drunk. You said what you said, so just I'm drunk right now, but I still curb what I say. And that's some H money. Am I not drunk on every panel I ever been on? Yeah, ain't I nobody perfect, man. Ain't, hey, listen, listen, man. Ain't nobody perfect, man. The man apologized like a man. He, you know, yeah. like a man. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't even have to do that. So, you know, what I mean, you got to respect him for uh, apologizing. Well, I respect him for that, but he can avoid it. He can avoid it. You don't. So you don't have to apologize. I get my point across. When have I sweared on your channel? Unless somebody's <laughs> calling me bad words. When have I sweared? H money. Hey, I know. I, I, be, and I, I be drunk. Hey. I know hey, how to get my, this, bro. I, I've Hodges never been disrespectful. Be doing some crazy shit sometimes, man. Hey, so but I don't be, but I'm not disrespectful. Nobody I mean, can ever say topic, bro. Let's let's so, Hey, I got you. We so, passed that. But yeah, I just know I just was saying, L dog, slow down a little bit because people are calling you all types of names in the chat, man. That's all I'm saying. Just 
phrase and be careful how you say stuff because on these channels, nah, that's why I'm blocked. I said one thing, now I'm blocked from a couple of LDBC channels. So you just got to be, I'm just like, you got to be, be careful. Be careful, no, just be careful how you phrase what yourself. Happened and, what happened with Kanan? Yo, you, you know, call Bill Haney a bitch. The big bill. I'm like, ooh. You're you're a bitch. That. You're that's, a unacceptable. Bitch. that's unacceptable, bro. You know what I mean? But it's all good. Hey, D. Hodges, so what happened with Fernando? I don't know, Fernando. I'm blocked. I, I, haven't been, I haven't been to his channel in three years. Once you block me, I'm fucking out. What's the point? I'm not going to come in with no troll account. I got another YouTube account, but I don't use it because I don't care. Once you block me, fuck you. Just like Ego, fuck you. I love Trill, so I'm not going to say that, but I'm even blocked on his channel, and I don't know who blocked me. And I've been asking to get unblocked, but they ain't. But I don't care because I still got, y'all see, I still got 50 million other channels. And I'm just letting you know, you got to be careful what you say, l Dog, because sometimes that sorry might not work. And I'll leave it alone. I'm going to just say this. I'm going to say this. <laughs> if it's Devin Haney, as far as his character goes, and then I'm going to say what I want to say. I don't believe any guy who's chasing other guys and the other guys won't fight him can be a bitch because he's trying to get those fights. I just believe that he's getting a little more hype than he deserves. But let me say this. Let me say this, though, about calling somebody a bitch. If you're going to call somebody a bitch, then you better be willing to fight that person that they run up on you. Because if you're not, then you really are the bitch. And I love him because he was so drunk, he said, I'll fight your son. You're fighting professional Devin Haney. You are not going to fight. No, he was drunk, though, bro. No, I give him a, I give him a pass. But what I'm saying is this. You can hear, no, you can hear by his voice and stuff, I'm a drunk. So I could tell he was drunk, but I knew he was when he said, I could beat him, your son. I said, oh, Bruh, boy. I didn't this say I could really beat is. him. I, I was on I, the, I, was beat him, bro. I, I said I'll fight him, but I ain't going to beat him. Here, here's the thing. There's a lot of people that will agree to shit over the internet, but when somebody's in your face, they, they sing a different fucking tune. And my thing is this. If you're going to call somebody a bitch, then you better be willing to back that up if they roll up on you. Or you're really the bitch. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying L Dog's a bitch. I'm not saying anybody's a bitch. But I'm saying if you, anybody out there, if you call somebody a bitch and you're too big of a pussy to fight them if they run up on you, then really you're the bitch. Period. For sure. Hey, let's switch, let's switch up the topic then. You know what I mean? I know, man, it's heated. You know what it is. Team Devin Haney all day, every day. The youngest champion in boxing. Shout outs to Trill Bill Haney. You know what it is. You know, we got these boys shook, man. Lopez don't want no smoke. We on his bumper. If he run up to 140, we gonna chase him down. You know what I mean? Lomachenko vacating the straps. Lomachenko. No Machenko, right? So let's, hey, let's talk about this. Uh, Ace Money, Ace Money. Where are you? Let's move, we gonna switch the topic, though, bro. Hey, hold on, we, hold we, on. Ace Money, where are you from? Ace Money. Where <laughs> I'm from L.A. I live in Memphis, though. I'm from L.A. I live I pull up on you, you hear me? Oh, this nigga from Cali. Oh, okay. Could you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I'm from LA, but I live in Memphis, though. Yeah, my girl said she knew you was from Cali. That's why I asked. You said, yeah, I mean. I was Are like, you from oh. You hear? You from down there, Tony? No, 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 no. Hold on. Here. Talk. Oh, gosh. No, I don't want to talk. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah. I don't know if they can hear you or not. Yeah, I can hear her. I, I hear her. You heard her? Yeah. So she was just yeah. saying, why is she in Cali? Why? Because yeah, because I, think, I think, you know, we on their bumpers. That's just, you know, that's some L.A. slang, <laughs> California slang, I mean. That's so west side, it don't even make no sense. Yep. Yeah, that's just how we talk out there. They talk like that in Oakland, L.A., San Jose, all yeah. through Cali, San Diego and shit. All over West Covina, all that. She's from Cali. I'm from New York. What part of Cali is she from? Oh, Lord. I'm originally from Inglewood, but I've been living in the Valley for a long time. Well, she's from the wood. That's, come on, man. That's right around the corner. That's LA. Inglewood is, that's LA, really. It's 9 4 all day. Yeah. Shout out to Rogers Park. All that. 
All right, back to the boxing talk. <laughs> Yeah, hey, so, yeah, let's get back to the boxing talk. So, I mean, what's your thoughts, Tony, on uh, Terrence Crawford and uh, Sean Porter real quick, man? I oh, heard Sean I, Porter. <laughs> I, I've been saying this for a long time. Sean Porter going to get knocked out. Um, Terrence Crawford is going to spark him late in the fight. And I've stayed with that for the last two years straight. I've been telling people that. They've been telling me I'm crazy. But every time I make a crazy prediction, it comes true. I think he knocks him out. Point blank, period. Damn, bro. Hey, do you think that fight could look like the Jeff Horn fight? Because Jeff Horn, he kind of has a similar style to Sean Porter. He's not as good, but no. his style is like uh, he'll rough you up. No, 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 no. I don't think it's going to look anything like the Jeff Horn because Sean Porter's smaller stature-wise than Jeff Horn. I think what's going to end up happening is Sean Porter's style is going to work against him, against a guy like Bud who knows how to backstep, create a little bit of space so he can get all full torque punches against shorter guys. He's going to catch him with uppercuts and, and hooks that are going to really, really, really stun him. And he's going to need very little room to create space. And it's just that smother style is very bad against Terrence Crawford. I'm telling you, like, his style is going to be his weakness. Whereas Jeff Horn, he's taller, longer, bigger. He likes to kind of wrestle you, whereas Sean Porter gets in your chest with his head and just tries to beat you up with his fist. They, they, they're different. Yeah, man, I, I think uh, I think Crawford will win, but I think it's going to be a good fight, man. Like, Sean Porter, you, we got to keep in mind, he's got a lot of experience. He's got more experience than Crawford. The dude has fought Errol Spence, your Dennis Ugas. He's fought Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, and Cal Brook. He fought them all in their primes as well. So that's why I'm... Here's a but he lost. A, Why do you give people give people a for effort and they lost? You give an a for because effort. because because here's, here's the thing. He didn't lose all those fights. He actually beat Danny Garcia and he beat your Dennis Ugas. No, Both. he didn't. Ugas whooped him in that fight. They just gave nah, it. Bro, that was I, a close I watched fight. that fight. Only reason why I remember watching that fight because that was the most emptiest stadium or whatever I ever seen. I mean, that shit looked like a high school football game. You maybe about maybe two hundred people was at that fight. If y'all remember that fight, watching it live, there was nobody at that gate. <laughs> I can see man missing spaces. It looked like a high school basketball game. But go back on mute. Sorry. Yeah, that was a that was a close fight. Like, uh, and I think uh, you know that's why I can't say uh, Crawford will just knock him out because Porter he's got a lot of experience, man. He was able to beat Ugas. He was able to beat Danny Garcia. I mean, the the dude is a good fighter, man. Let, let's just be real. His style is ugly, but it's, he's a, he's a very good fighter. He was dropped by Adrian Broner, who didn't throw a punch to the last round. I mean, I'm telling you, if Adrian can drop him, Bud's going to put his lights out. Okay, but we can say that, but you could have said the same thing about Errol Spence. But Errol Spence, uh, he didn't put his lights out. Nobody dropped him. Yeah, he, he got dropped, but I mean, still, Errol Spence is, is considered as hard or harder of a puncher than... Dick yeah, but, he, but but it's completely different stylistically. Earl Spence is not. No, nope, a... that went away once he couldn't knock out Mikey Garcia. Once he Errol couldn't knock out Mikey Garcia, that's when we started questioning. That's when people, not me, but that's when people started questioning his power. Like how he didn't knock out no. little Mikey. So that's that's when people start to question his power. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey ran from Earl Spence Jr. That's that's why he didn't get knocked out because he went into flight mode to survive to the end. He got a freaking moral trophy, a participation trophy for making it to the, the final round because he just ran from it. He didn't try to engage. So I don't hold that against Spence. But the thing is, Spence and Bud are different. Like the volume, the frequency, the counter punching is going to be a lot more coming from, from Bud than it was from Spence. He's going to hit him a lot more times. And it's going to be, it's just different. It's different. And I'm telling you. It's not going to be the same. And it's just, in my mind, how I see it, he's just going to get pieced up and it's going to break him down. Like you said, L Dog, he's going to get broken down and then he's not going to be able to come back from it. 
I don't know, man. I think it's going to be a hell of a fight. But I don't know if... Uh, I think Crawford should win, but it's going to be good, man. It's it's definitely going to be... But like I said, I'd much rather Bud versus Ugas. That's why I'm nah. starting to lose. I'm, no, I'm starting to lose points for Bud. Nigga, I'm going to get that get back. Everybody's talking about how you beat me in the amateurs and all that. Oh, Bruh, I'm, and I'm, that, a, I'm the president. That takes money. I'm the president of the Bud fan club. But he, well, I know he's getting poured up, but he need Ugas too. Because they got history and Ugas beat him. And everybody keep talking, yeah, Ugas beat him in the amateurs. Ugas beat him in the amateurs. Nigga, that was like 15, 10 years ago. So I would Bro, love to see I would love to see him beat up Ugas. But I'll take Porter too. Let's be real. That the only person who who brings that up is is uh BFTB because he's team Spence. A, a lot of people say it. I'm on more channels than LDBC. I'm on MXBC, UYTBC, LLAD. If it's about boxing, I'm on it and that's what everybody's saying. Different channels that agree. And they don't even like each other. Facts. Yeah, I, I don't I, I don't think Ugas stands a chance against but I I don't even think Ugas should be the champion because I think it's BS that Manny got stripped whenever he was mandated to fight anyone. Like they never mandated him to fight, so how can they take his belt? I don't care if he's been inactive or not. You still got to mandate him to fight somebody before you strip him. So Ugas shouldn't even be a champion. He's not even in the question, in my opinion. Me personally, I, I would like to see... Uh, I mean, the fight we all want to see is Crawford Spence, but I, God knows if it's ever going to happen, man. 80-20, L-Dog. That, that's where it's at now. 80-20. That fight's never going to happen. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it'll happen either, but I mean, it is what but, it is. I, I think. Uh, I think y'all never know. Arrow and Bud Mike got a little game plan like behind the scenes. We never uh, know because why it took seven years for um, Floyd to fight Manny. Like, who knows? They might both be just doing a collaboration because they see all the attention they're getting. I'm just saying as a human being, I don't know if that's what they're doing, but Yo, let's build this fight up more. So we both got it. And, uh, you know, so I just, they might be building up the fight. You got to keep that optimistic. Some fights we had to wait two, three years to see. But, so you got to be, you got to keep the same energy. But they might got, they might got a plan of where their fight. Cause like you notice Manny and Floyd, they waited all them years and then their fight became like, <laughs> A mega million, like they both was rich after that fight. So I don't know. We we all don't know. You know, what I'm saying we don't know. It might be smoke and screen, and who knows? Errol might be talking to Bud now. Like, yeah, we got the. I'm just looking as a person as me. Yeah, we got these people in the uproar, yo. Let's let's give one more fight, and if you win, give one more fight. If I win, then we fight each other. I'm telling you, fighters do that. They do that shit to build up the fight to get more money. I, I, I think Bud's just better off at this point going up to 154 and fighting for a time. Why? Why would you say that? He's going to get sparred. Yeah, he's going to get beat at that point. Dude, way. he's not a 154, nigga. He started at 135. So that means now he's almost 20 pounds heavier. No, he's going to get wiped at 145. And I love Bud, XH Money. I'm the biggest Bud fan on his channel. I ride for Bud, but if he go to 154, he's fooled. Unless he pick a bum. If he go to 154 and fight a bum, then that's it. But if he go for a Chalo, a Castillo, or one of them good, one of them good champions, right, right. You could say that. I don't think I don't think he has enough power to stop them. I mean, he's having he's having problems with stopping people at 147. He stopped. No, he stopped them. He no, he stops them. No, he stops them. But, but he don't knock them out. Stopping and knockout is a difference. It is two difference between a stoppage and a knockout. Knockout means your eyes got closed. That's the knockout. 
Four you still get TKO when the person one forty seven in any other weight class. He has knocked out every motherfucker. He's it's not a knockout. It's a stoppage. He ain't closed nobody's eyes. That's Bro, when it become a Bro, knockout. TKO, a knockout. A, T a knock. It's a TKO. See, that's why I know you're a casual. That's why I know you're a casual. Cause TKO means a technical knockout. A KO means you got your lights put out. No, I'd much rather take a TKO than a KO. If you stop them, you stop them. It still counts as a knockout, and he stops. It's a it's a technical knockout. Hey, that's that. Sorry. Period. There's no, there's yeah. no discussion. There's no debate. Yeah. He has stopped yeah. every guy he's fought in one point seven. Period. That's a fact. But it's not about that. I'm a Bud fan, but he didn't knock him out. He just beat him up so bad and stopped him. And y'all gotta fucking y'all casuals gotta get that. Like what? Like 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 what? Tio did to Leo. That's a knockout. Like what? Um um what Jared Anderson did. That's a knockout. You punched him and you put him to sleep and he couldn't get up. Okay. That's why they call it technical knockout. Okay. Answer this question. Answer this question for me. I got you. When, when I got you. you. Stoppage, Let's cook. When you, when you get a stoppage on your record, what does it count as? TKO. It says what? KO. It says KO, but it's still a TKO. When the, what is it? It's all about, it's all about when they announce it. When a person lose by a stoppage, the winner by TKO... Uh, Whoever, <laughs> but when a person says the winner by KO, because uh -huh. that nigga didn't get up no more, that's a knockout. Okay. So Technical is, knockout is, means you just beat him up too bad. If it's just a TKO, if that's what it counts as is on your record, then show me one fucking boxing site that shows KOs and TKOs separate. Not at all. That's just what the boxing people want to say because it's still a knockout. Exactly. It's a, it's a, but it's a technical, it's a, te it's a technical Bro, knockout because you technically, knockout. you technically knocked him out. Right. You, you know technically, because the referee had to stop the fight. That's a TKO. A okay. KO is when you completely and foul. Tank, Tank versus Leo, that Dillian White versus um, um, Pula, whoever he Bro. fought. Um, all those are knockouts. You got to determine a person could have a bunch of knockouts, but they wasn't knockouts. Because Wilder got many knockouts, but they wasn't all knockouts. He didn't put everybody to sleep. He just, he just he just he just beat him up well enough where he the referee had to stop it. That's the difference. That's why they call it a technical knockout because you was beating the guy out, the referee or your corner through the towel in. That's what they call it, technical knockout. But when you get that KO, that means you put that nigga flatlined. You knocked him down and he didn't get up. That's a true KO. But they all are the same because it's still a stoppage. That's why people, the young casuals, don't understand yeah. a stoppage is a TKO because the referee or corner stopped the fight. I so think I agree. Let, me, let me say this real quick, D. I think I agree with D. Hodges because, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, at the end of the day, you know, a stoppage is a stoppage. Like a TKO means they stopped the fight before you got your ass knocked out. So but they saved you pretty much from getting knocked out cold. Right, right. At the end of the day, if the referee stands in to save you, you were still going to get knocked out cold. They just didn't let it happen. You were still so far gone that you was going to get sparked. It, 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 that's why it counts as a knockout on your record. That's why when you look up people's records, it says win, loss, draw, and how many knockouts they have. It doesn't say how many knockouts and TKOs they have because it's all the same. If you get an RTD, a corner stoppage, guess what that counts as? A knockout win for you. It still goes in your knockout bracket. Why? Because you stopped them. They were unable to continue to fight. You are wrong here. Whether you agree with it or not, the fact of the matter is, the rules of boxing state, it counts as a knockout win, period. There's no argument. He has stopped every single fighter he's fought at 147. That's a fact. So to state yeah, eight that, straight knockouts, too. Yep. Eight straight. It, so to state that he could not go up to 154 is ridiculous because he's been dominating. He looks better, heavier. So who's the same? He don't have no power for 54 people. Man, listen, you're not oh. gonna tell me about my bud. Bud is my dudes out, bro. I've been, I've been out asking Jermaine money. Trello, bro. He'll knock how many out years? Trello, how many bro. years I know you H? How many years I rock with Bud? I you argue with first. You rock with dogs. And that's the point. I think, in my opinion, 154 is too big for him. H money. Let me ask you a question, H money. 
Does Bud Crawford look stronger and more dominant at 140 or 147 currently? Man, he looks strong every way. Every time he go up, he looks stronger. So he looks stronger at 147 right now. Right. So every time we've seen him go up and wait, he only looks stronger and more dominant, correct? Yeah, hell yeah, for so real. State, to state that he would look bad at 154 is just refuting the facts of he's looked better every time he's went up in weight, is it not? Yeah, and those guys are bigger at those weight classes, but – the people fail to realize Terrence Crawford, bro, is he's actually a very big dude. Like the man, five nine, you know what I'm saying? With a 74 inch reach, he damn near favors uh Marvin Hagler. He's as big as Hagler, he's just at a lighter weight class, but he could move up and be a middleweight. I think I could see him going all the way up to middleweight. I'm right there with you. So I, I don't believe he loses by default if he goes up. In my opinion, if he's not going to get the Spence fight, he might as well go up and at least try to fight for another title. Because right they now, ain't gonna he's fight him. Opportunity. they ain't going to fight him, bro. Ain't nobody going to fight him. They going to duck him, bro. What up, Major Key? My boy, Major, in the building. What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? What's good, Major? What's good? Chill, man. I was gonna let them cook, man, because it was over there back and forth. Bro, shit. I was like, hey, shit. What's going hey, Major on? Key. Everybody subscribe to Major Key Boxing right now on YouTube. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, Major Key. So what you think about what we're talking about right now? I mean, I think I just uh put that one to bed right there. I think yeah, yeah. I mean, what, 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 let, let's switch topics. Like, like, like throw any topic out. Freestyle, go ahead. Whatever you want to talk about. Throw any topic. Who, who want to throw a topic out there? Throw any topic. I, I just, I just, I, I, I feel like, um, I feel like y'all put that one to bed, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was cooking on that one for a minute. All right, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Canelo real quick. I want to talk about uh, Canelo. What you think about him? You know what I mean, Billy Joe Saunders. You think Canelo gonna knock him out? Um, I think that uh, when it comes to Billy Joe, um, I think that uh, Billy Joe is a very good test for him. Um, I could see it going if 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 Callum Smith went uh, twelve rounds with him. I could see because I think Billy Joe is a little uh, a little tougher, uh, but I think uh, Callum Smith is a little more technically sound. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I feel like uh, uh, Billy Joe would last if, if, if Callum Smith land, lasted twelve rounds. I feel like Billy Joe would last twelve rounds. But I think it'll be more fireworks, and uh, and uh, Billy Joe might get clipped. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think uh, Canelo's beard has been tested over and over and over and over and over again, to the point where you got to think that yo, he's not gonna get dropped by Billy Joe. So it's gonna be a matter of Billy Joe if he wants to engage, he's gonna get clipped. Um, at the end of the day, I think uh, we're gonna see a, a undisputed match uh, versus uh, versus uh, Caleb Plant and Canelo if uh, Caleb Plant doesn't duck that one. So hopefully he doesn't duck that one. You know what I'm saying? Um, if he doesn't duck that one, we're gonna have a, a undisputed bout. But what I think about Canelo right now, look, man, he gave us a free fight in February because he normally only fights March and uh, I'm sorry, May and uh, September, and he gave us one just to get that mandatory out the way. Regardless of who said uh, he needed to fight him or not, the point is he got it out the way. So you don't even need to complain like he was hyping it up for like a big, uh, you know, uh, Cinco de Mayo fight or anything like that. He got it out of the way. Now he's going to fight Billy Joe Saunders, who's another champion. Uh, and, and, and and don't don't blame him for beating the champions. He's beating the champions, though. He's fighting the champions. He wants to beat the champions. That's all I got to say about Canelo. Hey, Major Key, Canelo been looking like a beast lately, man. I know, man. Have you noticed that, bro? Have you noticed man. that shit? Man, I've been seeing it, bro. And his high guard defense, bro, that shit is amazing, though. You know what I mean? And the so, punch selection, too. The punch selection is crazy. Yeah, his movement, too. His movement is amazing, bro. His head movement, too. The way he, when he won a boxing shit, it's a beautiful thing to watch. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. That's true, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. He, he's a dog. And right now, Canelo is actually in his prime. He just got it in his prime right now. He's about 30. So Canelo right now, he, I think he he has developed all the way as a fighter. So now we're starting to see the best of Canelo at this age, and uh, you know what I mean. Canelo bringing that he bringing that smoke. To be honest, no matter who we fight, I think he's gonna put up a, a good fight, no matter who it is. You know, he might yeah. lose or whatever. Anybody can lose, but the thing is this: he gonna bring he gonna bring that smoke to whoever, and he's been bringing that smoke. Yeah, and he got time. And once he becomes undisputed, he got time, bro. He got time to fight everybody that everybody wants because I want to see him fight wh whoever uh, everybody else wants to see. I want to see him fight the people at 160. I want to see him fight the people at 175. Give the dude some time, though. He want to uh, 
create legacy and, and uh, become a disputed at 168. Give the man some time. Like he, he's not, he hasn't been joking his whole life. You see people want, uh, at 30 years old right now that haven't done shit with their career. You know what I'm saying? Let the man get, get you know, get what he want to do for his uh, legacy and, and, and just watch. Watch. You know what I mean? That's all I got to say. Yeah, see, the thing is, is this right now. He He's at 168 pounds. I think he's going to destroy uh, Billy Joe. I think Billy Joe is easy work. I respect Billy Joe in the UK. He can box, but he don't. He don't got the power. He doesn't have the boxing skills like uh, Demetrius Andrade. He don't have the boxing skills like Caleb Plant to really give Canelo that type of problems. His speed ain't there like that, but he can move a little bit. But I think Canelo, ultimately, Canelo going to beat, beat his ass. Canelo going to stop him. You know what I mean? And then I think Caleb Plant going to be a tougher fight. Caleb Plant, go ahead. No, no, I was saying I agree. I agree again. Like uh, when it comes yeah. down to it, uh, again, I feel like um, – um, this dude stood away from him most of the fight, Callum Smith. He broke him down to size because Callum Smith was way taller. I think Billy Joe will, will, will try to get involved because he's got such a big ego and he's going to get clipped. That's, that's exactly what I said. You know what I'm saying? So it just, it's just it depends on uh, whether he wants to try to like stay slick on the outside, but that's not Billy Joe's real, real style. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to stick to the game plan like that. He's not very disciplined like that. So I, I feel like he's going to come in Try to box with Canelo. Canelo's going to clobber him. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's my take on that. Yeah. And, and one more thing. I mean, I don't want to. I'm sorry. I don't want to forget about David Benavidez in that equation. I know he don't have a belt, but he had a belt, you know, a two-time world champion. I mean, David Benavidez. I don't think Canelo's ever been in there with somebody like Benavidez. I try to really think about it. In Canelo's career, he's never faced anybody like Benavidez with that type of style. You know what I mean? I mean, he fought Kovalev. It was kind of, I mean, Kovalev is probably the closest thing to, okay. to Benavidez, but Kovalev was older. And Ko Kovalev wasn't the same guy. He, even though he still was a good fighter, he wasn't the same Kovalev. Man, I think Benavidez is going to be an interesting matchup. I do got Canelo winning, but I think that's going to be a crazy fight right there. But what I really, mean, when people sleep on Plant, Plant could take a punch in box. Plant done been hit by some of the heaviest punches in that division, and somehow white people got chins like that. Not making it a race thing, but somehow they can get hit with the kitchen sink, and they still keep coming. So, you like, know, like I know. Who, this, huh? Like who? Who who did he get hit like that? By, uh, like that? Like the, some of the hardest hitters? Who who hit him like that? I can't remember everyone, but I can name the fighters that got punched the shit out of and. They didn't. I'm his last one, but Terry, whatever, the one for Unified, the last guy he fight when he Unified, that guy was punching the shit out of him, and he took the punches, and he just outboxed him. Who was his last fight where he got Unified or whatever? The, the Spanish guy or whatever. Who you talking about? Uh, um, um, the last fight he had where he won it. Um, oh, Benavidez? No, no, I'm, no, talking, no. About plant. I'm yeah. talking about Plant. The last oh, Caleb fight he, Truex. he fought against Caleb yeah. Truex. I think. No, I'm talking. Um, 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 no, that not Canelo. So, so then before about that him. was uh, was Fighting Butts, and before that was uh, was uh, what's his name? Uh, Uskatagi. Yeah, Utazi yeah. was pretty good though, Glenn. He was yeah. pretty good though, Major. And I'm Glenn, not saying he, that. He, I just he, said Uskatagi was Plant could take a punch. Plant could take a punch. But he beat he beat uh, uh, what's called it an old Andre Durrell, man. Like Andre Durrell. Is, is somebody that it was in his prime was the 2012 uh, World uh, Championship Series on, on Showtime. See, because Benavides' chin never been tested. That's why I would got him over Benavides easily, but I watched Plants fight. That dude be getting hit with some elation shot, and I'd be amazed why he didn't fall. I mean, so I, I don't know. Power is different, but... Caleb Plant could definitely got a chin. He definitely got a chin. He, he no, bro, one thing about it, that dude Benavidez is really a beast, though. Now, his high guard defense, too, he, he fight in the same style. Like, high guard, uh, he got hand speed. He's young. He's tall. That motherfucker's strong. Big. Yo, he looking like a bo a real boogeyman right, now, right about now, Glenn. Oh, Who, David Benavidez? No, yeah, he looking like I'm, I'm not. Gonna, I'm not gonna doubt. I'm not gonna doubt that. The, but but here's the thing. You we know, gotta you know, see tomorrow. Tomorrow hey, is so. our tomorrow is our assessment of better oh beings. How he? Oh my that's, god! That's, oh my that's god! Yeah. How he? How Benavides he doing tomorrow? tomorrow? Oh my goodness! It is that tomorrow. Is so I wonder how he do tomorrow. I already got it. 
goddamn no, seven. I don't even want to watch the Chocolito fight because of Benavidez. I'm like, fuck the Chocolito fight because of, I want to watch Benavidez almost, bro. He's like, oh man, must see TV right about now. That dude, bro. But go ahead, Major. Can we gonna pass it no, around. The only reason why I told you I don't got the zone or I will watch that Estrada Chocolatito, but I got Showtime or ESPN, whatever is coming on. It's on free TV. And I'm telling you, we're going to see if, if, because if he looks bad against this guy we don't know about too much, then we'll know where he's at. It's about his fight tomorrow. Once I watch his fight tomorrow, then I can assess how he'll do against the Charlo, uh, Canelo. We can't say nothing right now. We got to fight tomorrow. Charlo, so so yeah. have a post-fight, H, H. Have a post-fight tomorrow after the fight so we can get on the panel and talk about how well he did, if you can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I kind of want to watch the Benavidez fight, man, because I know he's going to do something I've probably never seen before. He bring that, you know, that – that excitement, Benavidez, bro. His style, bro, is exciting where he's looking for knockouts, bro, for real. But hey, I want to hear what everybody else got to say. Let's go to Major Key, and then we pass it to DJ Saddam, uh, my boy, uh, and my brother, uh, DJ. We got DJ in the building. Man, I'm going to say y'all tripping, bro. Like, y'all going to miss uh, Chocolatito versus Estrada for David Benavidez fighting some dude that, that I'm pretty sure nobody knows of, just as the same d just said. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's the, he's the brother of somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, ah, oh, come on, bro. Y'all bugging. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, with, with David Benavidez, if you wanted to assess him, you would have assessed him already against Anthony Durrell. You know what I'm saying? That was an assessment right there. You know what I mean? Uh, now, it, do I want to see him fight? Yeah. Do I think he's dangerous? Yeah. But, uh, you know, you could say the same thing about Berlanga. Berlanga hasn't fought nobody like uh, Anthony Durrell. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Anthony Durrell is at the back end of his career. You know what I'm saying? So, so you know, I want to see all of them fight. Don't get me wrong. But uh, but right now, uh, again, I would like to see Canelo uh, fight all of them, uh, not just David Benavidez. I want to see him fight, but he's trying to become undisputed. I ain't mad at B, uh, the Billy Joe Saunders fight. I ain't mad at the Caleb Plant fight. Once it becomes undisputed, then, then let's talk about everything else. Well, Benavidez got to get that work, though. We got to get Can uh, Canelo uh, Benavidez. I know some people say Canelo... Canelo said something about not fighting Mexicans or whatever. You know, people, some people saying Canelo is ducking Benavidez. Like, you know, hey, super chat in the building, my boy, Charles Harris. You know what I mean? Charles Harris, the father and the trainer of Lolo Harris. Yo, Glenn, major key boxing is a young fighter by the name of Lolo Harris. Charles Harris, bro, the truth. You know what I mean? He's only 17, professional. Four wins, three knockouts. Hopefully, we can get him on Major Key Boxing. That's his dad right there in the Super Chat. He sparred against Tank, you know, in front of Floyd Mayweather. He did his thing. Yo, the dude is the truth, Glenn, and he got power. You're going to love his style, Glenn. Major Key, you're going to love his style, bro. I, I, I've been checking up on him since since uh, I seen the, the video you posted. So uh, so hopefully, we can make that come to fruition, you know what I'm saying, and and pop it off on the channel, you know what I mean? Uh, nothing what about but love. You available Monday? I know you do the major key uh, boxing on Mondays, on uh, Monday nights. Everybody check them out. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm always available Monday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Um, and, you know, um, you know, you, you know how to get in connection with me each Monday. You just let them know. You know what I'm saying? For sure. For sure. There you have it. You know, shout out to my boy Lolo, the coldest. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I want to go to... Uh, to my brother DJ Saddam, what you think about David Benavidez tomorrow night? I just think uh, he's a he's a special fighter. He's a special type of talent, and I think he's must see TV. Like, I mean, it doesn't matter who this guy fight. I want to watch it, just like Canelo beat up on Yildrum. You know what I mean? I want I want to watch Canelo. I think Benavidez he's that type of fighter right about now. But go ahead, DJ Saddam. Hey, salute to everyone, uh, everyone in the chat, everyone in the panel. Salute, hey, salute. Johnny, respect, Big Daddy Kane. Um, you know, I, I think I like Benavidez's attitude now these days. You know, he's saying things like, I have to I have to earn the fight with Canelo. I want Charlo next. I want to fight Plant next. Whatever the result is against Canelo, whether he loses against Canelo or not, I want him next. I like this attitude. He knows he's he's on this path to get his belt back, uh, become a world champion again. 
I really respect it. But let's kill this one narrative because that was in in a Spanish interview that that Canelo gave, and he said what he said in response to a specific question about Munguia. They asked him whether he would fight Munguia, and he said, "I don't want to fight another Mexican." Almost the next question they asked him, "What about Benavides?" He said, "I'm on my path to undisputed now." But soon enough, he will get his turn, basically. So uh, when he said, I won't find, fight other Mexicans, he very specifically meant he doesn't want to fight a Mexican national now. And it was a specific question about Munguia at 160. So I, I think that's, that's very reasonable. You know, it's very reasonable for Canelo to do what he wants to do, what his priority is at 168. And then maybe in 2022, when that fight becomes inevitable, both in terms of our expectation from the sport and in terms of the value it can generate, I think that would be, that would be perfect. Whether I would watch Benavides fight Ronald Ellis over Chocolatito versus Estrada, you must be out of your mind. Um, <laughs> I think that's that's just unreasonable. Um, but, hey, hey, that's his brother of Rashidi Ellis, right? Ronald Ellis. He sparred against I, I, do, I do respect him. He has a decent record. You know, maybe hasn't hasn't really moved to the championship level. Um, but you know, I mean, to me, Chocolatito and Estrada are, you know, basically with this fight punching their ticket to Hall of Fame. You know, Benavides. And Ellis, they're still carving their legacy. Um, I can always watch the fight, you know, the next day after the Chocolatito Estrada fight finishes. Easily. Um, Get it for free. <laughs> Benavides, we know Benavides. We know he will probably win. Uh, I want to see him against uh, more challenging opponents, but I'm not going to prioritize it over Estrada versus Chocolatito. It's impossible. Um, that's that's historic. I'm not going to miss that for Benavides trying to carve his way back to a uh, title. Man, Benavides is something special, man. I'm I'm big on Benavides. I believe in this kid, man. I think, you know, if he gets it together... Go ahead. Hey, somebody paid you off on this one, bro, because you can't be <laughs> honest, bro. That's Somebody paid you up on this one, dog. Nah, you got that connect now? Hey, that dude, the truth. <laughs> hey, he got it, man. That dude is the truth, bro. And I think Canelo versus Benavida is going to be a super fight. Like, pay-per-view, break records, biggest fight. You know what I mean? We need of that. Of course, all Mexico is going to buy it. So oh, that's all Mexico, yeah. bro. That's <laughs> all out Mexican war. That's Canelo, that's he got to do that for me. I need that one. The mic be heard. Can you hear me? Is it working? Hello? Say it again. What'd you say, bro? I was saying, can y'all hear me? I, I dropped. I just got to where I was going. But yeah, you good. What you and hey, we talking about Benavidez, man. Off. Yeah, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna get off because I just got to where I was going. So here's the thing about the coming back full circle to where it began. Billy Joe Saunders versus Canelo. I say it all depends on it's contingent on which Billy Joe Saunders shows up. If it's the one, the vintage Billy Joe Saunders that fought like David Lemieux. Andy Lee, et cetera, like old school hit and move mobile. I say he gives Canelo a lot of issues because the biggest issues we've seen with Canelo fights is like Lara, Mayweather, Austin Trout, mobile style fighters like that, he tends to struggle with more. So I would say if that Billy Joe could show up, he has a shot. However, if it's the Billy Joe we've been seeing recently with Martin Murray, et cetera, I don't think he stands much of a chance. Now, as far as Caleb Plant goes, I think he's too feather-fisted for Canelo. I think he just walks right through him, gets on top of him, and beats him up. So I, I don't think Plant really stands a chance against Canelo because I just don't think he has enough sting to keep Canelo off him. Now, to your guy, David Benavidez, that I don't know. I'm up in the air about because Benavidez is big and he hits hard. And he's got a good defense, just like Canelo. So that's that's a, a very unsure fight for me because, I mean, 
we know Canelo's got a chin, but I don't know if he's ever been hit by anybody like David Benavidez. I mean, you could say Triple G, maybe, but I don't know because Benavidez is way bigger. I mean, this dude really should be fighting at 175 and not 168, in all honesty, by his size. Won the belt twice, lost it twice. Who can say that, but never lost it in the ring, never lost it in a fight. Dude's impressive. Young, too. But with that, I'm about to get off, go ahead, talk to these people. Thank you for letting me on. For sure. That's us, because when you lose weight, you got to you gotta, you gotta drop it, man. Check out his channel, Tony Reviews, on YouTube, man. Yeah, you got to, because that's his fault. You got to learn discipline, just like everybody tanking everybody else, discipline. If he come in discipline, and, you know, he just, because he don't care, because some fighters do that. And I'm not saying he did it. But I know fighters that put on more weight and didn't make weight. They didn't care about losing the belt on the scale. Long as I'm big enough to get rid of this guy, I eventually get my belt back. I'm telling you, in my opinion, I don't know if everybody did it, but I bet you some people went over the scale on purpose. Yeah, I don't I know care. I, I lose the belt, but hey, I got a chance to win the fight, and I still got my O. And now I can still go get my belt back from whoever. Not yeah, saying I, I, Benav not saying Benavides did it, but throughout history, people I can't name them right now as I'm drunk, but people done that. People miss weight on purpose sometimes. Yeah, no. And well, they well, paid a little fee and dropped their belt, but hey, they still got their O and now I'm 20 pounds heavier than the guy. So what? I lost my belt and dropped it and lost on the scale. Now I can already put on more extra weight. Not everybody does it, but I guarantee you I'm a diehard boxer fan. I know it's a few people that did. I just can't name them. All right. Well, yo, uh, I know somebody else is trying to jump in, and I, I don't want to keep interrupting because somebody hasn't spoken yet. Uh, but I just want to say one thing to, to that whole uh, conversation there. Um, look at the last time Canelo fought a Mexican that was undisciplined was Chavez Jr., and he said he's going to whoop his ass to show him how he's supposed to be disciplined. So what do you think is going to happen when, when, when Canelo jumps in that ring with somebody that shows lack of discipline, bro? You know what I mean? Just, he's going to want to make a statement, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I got to say when it yeah. comes to that. Hey, hey, Glenn, but you know, Benavidez is much better than Chavez Jr., bro. Benavidez is a special fighter. And I think Benavidez is way better than what Triple G was. His skill set is... You know, amazing, bro. Too early so to tell though, too early to tell though, man. Like I, I know that we want to look at the, the prospects, like you know what I'm saying, like this and this and that. I, I'm just being honest with you. It's, it's too early to tell right now. I, I like him a lot. Darrell, oh man, stop Darrell, stop the J. Leon Love Mayweather promotions in the fucking. J. Leon Love, bro, he was, J. Leon Love bro, lost a long time ago, bro. He but wasn't the way either. he did him though, ain't nobody did him, J. Leon. The way he did that nigga. The, oh, he the, the Leon Love was always a hype, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he was supposed <laughs> to be the next. Everybody said he was the next Mayweather. Hey, man, that shit got squashed real early. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Glenn, you funny little motherfucker. Hey, subscribe <laughs> to Major Key Boxing, man. You know he bringing that smoke, man. You know what I mean? That's what you you could expect that on Major <sighs> Key Boxing. You know, he got that pressure. Yeah. But, hey, Glenn, I'm going to tell you like this, though. That motherfucker Benavidez beat the fuck out of Darrell, who was a champion, and just destroyed I him. I understand that. I understand that. that. That's what I'm saying. That was his best win. I do I do agree with that. You know what I'm saying? So, so yo, uh, I don't know who the other brother is, on, but let, let him cook real quick, because I'm going to go uh, make me a drink. It's Friday night. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, DJ. My boy DJ, what's good? What's good? What's good? Salute to the panel. Salute to the chat. Uh uh, Major Key, he, uh, he had a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of points, you know, especially when he said uh the Chavez Jr., you know, that's the first thing that came to, comes to my mind when I think about David Benavidez, you know, this this bigger, younger fighter, you know, when he's campaigning at a, a weight class that as we seen the uh the Chavez when he fought Jacobs. If Chavez would have took the fight seriously when he was hitting Jacobs, you, we could see that he was hurting him. You understand what I'm saying? And with Benavidez, he has power, you know. But uh, as far as skill set, I, I like certain things he does, you know, but, but it's like he lacks certain things at the same time. That's what kind of gave Canelo the advantage over uh, Chavez. And I, I just I just can't see. I think Benavidez is the most proven and talented among all the other fighters at 168 between Benavidez and Caleb, uh, 
Caleb, Caleb, and uh, Billy Joe. I think Benavidez is the best out of those guys. But I just can't see uh, Canelo losing any of them. They all lack certain things. They don't. They're not really well-rounded, as in the state of like Andre Ward, who can mix it all up and do everything all at once, and not just be strong at one at one point. You know, and that's what Canelo he he excels at. You know, Laura he could move around the ring. He could get in, get out, and with Plant. When I watch Plant, he he drags his foot, and then when he he, he get when he does get hit, you know, he retreats, and he he just. You know, and it's, it's like sometimes he loses discipline as well. It's like Billy Joe saying this. Billy Joe, he wants to hop in there. He drops his guard. And just and Canelo, he just takes advantage of that. You know, his IQ is insane. You know, and I, I really don't have no problem with Canelo fighting the Billy Joes and the plants. I just want to see afterwards, you know, him just, if he can if he can keep up that momentum and, and, and fight better, more and better fights. You know, if he can go to 175 and, you know, win another title. He got to give me that Benavidez fight, man. That's the yeah. one I want to see. I want to yeah. see somebody fight against David Benavidez. But well, believe me, I mean? Canelo is Canelo is not fighting at 175 no more. He got the weakest person and the oldest. Believe me, if he go to 175 against them gunners up there, I, I don't know. I don't know if he has enough power to keep him away, but they definitely do. So they need to drop 175, clear out 168 and 160, and I retire. But he better stay away from 175 because them people at that 175, like, they are super big. I think Canelo probably, I think he could probably do Bevel like uh, Valdez did, but, you know, you know, catch him coming in. You know, it's, it's, it's possible. You know, he's a counter puncher, you know, and he's elusive at the same time. You know, it's not like we haven't seen Bevel be hurt before, you know, or been dropped before. Same with Better Be If. Better Be If, you know, he's pushing almost 40 soon. You know, so he's on a decline. I mean, Canelo, he's in his prime. You know, so he, it, everything's in his favor right now. You know, so we we it, all, right, all right now it's all speculation. But when when we look at the facts and what's what's in front of us, Canelo has all. Right. If, if Canelo could unify at one sixty or one sixty eight, he don't need one seventy five. He already got that in the bag. He beat the boogeyman Kolov or whatever. No matter who, crook, 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 he's already the king at 175. So I'll forget that 175 and I'll go clean up 168 and 160. So yeah, now he's gonna, he going, he going, Canelo's going, he, at, at the end of the day, he's going to come out on top in 160. I don't think uh, Billy Joe is going to last uh, seven rounds. Neither is Plant. I think he's, he, he, he makes easy work of them. I think Lara was a better fighter than those two. Um, and this is, I just can't see those guys they really posing any trouble. You know, they 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 but some people call them slick. I think they're elusive and they 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 move a little well, but they don't really have that it factor, you know. It's 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 yeah. their footwork looks uh I think to the casual, it looks very it looks top notch, but to me it's not, you know, especially if Us and the plant fight the way he did them in a sense, like he's just started cutting the ring off, but he squared and when he squared up, plant was able to capitalize, you know, yep. and and it just, it was just, it wasn't impressive at the end of the day for me for Plant in that fight with Wiscotti because then Lionel Thompson came back and fought Wiscotti and made easy work of You know, he, he just he just skated through that. He just he just went right through that fight easily. Lionel, and Yo, Lionel S Thompson just, just dominated him. Yo, Saddam, did you want to add something before I jump in? Because I know you haven't spoken in a minute. I just got back. Uh, For Canelo, Canelo Saunders especially. Well, yeah. All right. So in general, let me just make a general statement then. And if you want to uh, pinpoint some some fact that, that, that you want to jump on, I just want to make a general statement, just like they were talking about. Um, sure. I think that Canelo is going to, um, uh, uh, like I said, become undisputed. Then everybody else, because let's let's be honest, uh, I, I'm pretty sure all of you guys know the answer to these questions. Andre said he could move up, right? Andre, Demetrius Andre, he, he said he could move up, right? Yeah, he should have. Yeah. Okay. Jamal Charlo said he could move up, right? Yeah. Charlo said, yeah, he even said it for David Benavides. They, they both said that they could move up. So yep. if Canelo's the man that you're trying to go after, and he already said, I'm becoming undisputed, and I'm going to become undisputed. I'm going to fight these people to become undisputed. This is what I want to do. You got enough time right now to just move up and take a, you know, especially if you're going to fight uh, somebody that, that's not even recognizing your division. You might as well, you're not going to fight each other. Just come up and just take a tune-up fight and, and, and get yourself acclimated to the to the division and get ready for a Canelo fight. You know what I'm saying? 
Who that's that's what I feel should be about? happening. You talking about uh, Charlo and Android or um uh, who you yeah, talking about? Uh, yeah, anybody calling them out right now, uh specifically uh Android and, and um and Charlo because Bivol um and better BF, unless they're willing to move down, then it's uh it's up to uh Canelo to 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 become undisputed because that's what he said he wanted to do, and then move up to fight with a, one of them. Um, Major what, how boxing much is a genius. You a genius. He just came up with the best fight. Demetrius Andrade versus David Benavidez. That fight should happen next. I want that fight now. Look, man, the my I love Andrade. I have been a huge fan of him since that Willie Nelson fight, which I think was in 2015. Right? And that should that should kind of tell you enough about how much or how little his career progressed from then on. I don't know who, you know, I, I blame Matchroom a lot for this, but I don't know what his handlers have been doing all this time. You know, we had an inkling of Canelo going up to 168 since that Rocky Fielding debacle. Why didn't he, you know, he had this spat going on with Billy Joe for years now. Why didn't he just move up to 168 and get his belt? Or at least challenge him for his belt. I mean, I, I believe he would beat Billy Joe as well. But why didn't he do that? If he did that, he would have been in Canelo's path. And maybe Canelo would turn away again. I don't know. But at least he would have proven his point. He would have proven his point beyond reasonable doubt that Canelo is running away from him. But he didn't do that. He should have moved up to 168 a long time ago. And he has the frame for it. If anyone at 160 has the frame for it, it's Demetrius Andre. You know, and and he would have become a three three weight division champion four time. That's not a bad legacy in and of itself, even without the Canelo fight. You know, if, if your promoter is not helping you enough, force your promoter's hand. Yeah, to take him to trail. Help you. The trailer. You know, so um, when it comes to Billy Joe Saunders and his chances against Canelo, you know, we, we are not we're not traditional media, so we don't have to regurgitate their bullshit. But I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tired of this whole narrative about if Billy Joe is at his best, if he is at 110%, when have we seen Billy Joe Saunders at his best? Two fights out of his entire career. One was against Andy Lee when he first won his title at middleweight. The other one was against Lemieux. Again, that's been years and years ago. He has no significant wins at 168. He has looked like shit since he was caught for that nasal spray. That's that's the difference between Canelo and, and a lot of these other fighters who are in the mix with him. Canelo gets a controversial decision. Canelo gets away with a draw. Canelo gets caught with something. He comes back with revenge. He comes back with spending months and months in the camp. He comes back like a renewed fighter. He comes back having added another aspect to his game. He comes back with a new fire in his eyes. He comes back showing everyone a new level. What has Billy Joe Saunders done since he got scared of Andrade and had to pop something that was supposedly a nasal spray? What has he done since then? What has he done since he moved up to 168, except for picking up a vacant title? He has no chance against Canada. What's up, gentlemen? Everybody fell asleep. What's going on? D. Hodges, you drinking still? What's going on?
Cheers to everybody. So well, no, I'm just, no, I'm just chilling with y'all. You know what I mean? I want to come in a bunch of times, but I seem like when I come in, I'm, cu I'm cutting somebody off. So, no, you it's the point. I, I, I don't want to jump in and somebody's talking. So, no, I'm, I'm trying saying, to you look at the shit reserve zone? Oh, nah, I'm Natty Daddy now, baby. I'm on Natty Daddy wave because I can't do liquor. Because I, if I drink, yeah, and nah, I left that at 211. Now I yeah. had to down I had to downgrade the natty daddy because right that, now if right chronic. now if, listen right now if I had two eleven still reserved on dogs me and MMA champ wouldn't have been cool especially the way he was talking I would have been calling them <laughs> bitch fuck you now I'll beat you up when I see you like yeah that's that still reserved make me evil and that's why I had to uh, downgrade because I really want to fight you drink too many because I drink them by the forty oh man. Man, so that, that's did. psychological right there, though, bro, because because I drink these steel reserves, man. But don't get me twisted. I'm also drinking some Crown and Coke because it's Friday, bro. You know what I'm saying? No, so but the I go, liquor. I, the, the, Ooh, I do, liquor's the I worst. Do, yo, D. Hodges, the only reason I do uh, 211s, just to be honest with you, and I can't, I can't afford uh, no Bud. Bud just makes my stomach full. Coronas make my stomach full, bro. It don't you know matter. Shit. I can afford Heineken and Corona. They I'm don't do. do. I, don't, I, I can afford all that, but I don't care. They don't do nothing. I can drink a whole fucking 12 That's pack. In this. So, yeah, I got to get the shit. I'm on a low budget. So, like, when yeah, I drink St. Ives, like, when I drink OE. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucking same nigga same for that person. They, person they still person sell, that sell St. Ives where you live? You don't know how much I can beers I can get for that person that buy that twenty dollar, twenty five dollar bottle pint of Hennessy. Like, no, that stuff make me really evil, and I'll be blocked on everybody's channel. I'm telling you, a few people him send me up the street in the hood because nigga, I'll fuck you up. They, like, yeah, that liquor dog. It's like I'll come see you now, and you live in California. I live in Boston. I know I'm not going to come to see you. So, man, yeah, your ass going to be in the middle of the desert asking for a fucking ride, bro. You ain't going to fucking get it all the way to California, bro. Stop talking shit. No, no, I'm just saying one time that I think, I don't think I did now that there's a fake me, but one time, I, I don't, because I don't never be on camera, but they said I peed on the show, and I don't remember, but I really I remember that it, shit, bro. I, no, you don't but, remember that shit? Yeah, I couldn't remember because I drank that whole half pint of Henny. I don't drink L. Yeah, I drink the whole half. Pee, bro, right in front of the camera, dog. Yeah, I drank the whole half a pint of Henny, and I apologized. And I might have been me, but the second time, I wasn't even on H's channel no more. Okay. After he cussed me out, I never went back again. So the All second right. time I did it, that was not me. But that All first well, time, well, no, that, no, that <laughs> first time was... Because I, I had never, yeah, I never even knew you did it the first time. I was just fucking with you to see what you would say. But uh no, but I did. did. I hey, probably did. It. And I and I got on the show and apologized <laughs> and I showed niggas the whole half pint of henny I drink, plus beers, plus weed. I was going off on everybody on that show. On Dawes, anybody that's asked H money, nigga, I was going on everybody talking reckless. And you notice ever since that day on anybody's show you see me on. I don't talk reckless. It's just too much alcohol. So that's why I got to learn to, I learned to downgrade. So I don't, because sometimes, like I was telling L Dog earlier, sometimes no matter drunk or what, that sorry don't work, depending upon what you say. That's why Bill Haney was saying yesterday, I don't want your apology, because he was so disrespectful. So sometimes sorry because I'm drunk don't work. So that's why after me and H Money had our little thing, that's why any panel or more, and I even come on your show, I make sure I'm straight enough so I can communicate without having to call people bad words, you know? That's just me. Yeah, man. Yeah, there's an old saying, sorry didn't do what you did. You know what I'm saying? Sorry didn't do it, you did. So you always got to hold yourself accountable. As long as you held yourself accountable, you're all good, man. But I, was, I literally was just fucking around. I didn't even know you peed, bro. And I was just fucking around with you, bro. But Joe, what's going on? H Money, you you just like left the bill. H Money be like uh, jumping from panel to panel, bro. He let people cook. He jump on some other shows, start going live with them. But that's cool <laughs> because, see, that's just called he got confident in us not to ruin his channel. When people, I know I can name, I'm not going to say man because then that'll put me in something. But I know mad many people that said, yeah, yeah, sit on the panel and hold it down. I'll be back. It's nothing wrong yeah. because they trust their panel. 
and they know yeah. we're not that bad. Now, a person with the bad piano, they're not leaving at all. You know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah, H Money yeah. trusts us. We can hold his show down without arguing. That's called trust. Yeah, that's facts. That's facts. So, yo, so honestly speaking, man, uh, you, you don't look. I like David Benavides. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I like David Benavides. But at the end of the day, man, you, you don't think Canelo's going to uh, bring it to him, bro? Saying he's not. I really, like I said, he's too flat footed. I kind of might eat crow again, but I will, I will kind of pick Canelo a little bit because, like I said, he's, you know, kind of flat footed a little bit. But yeah, no, I, 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 I give, I, you know, but I, I give him like a 50 50 because, you know, who knows what he's going to come out that night. We already know what Canelo's going to do, but we don't know what um, Better Venus is going to come at. So, Right now, I give it 50 50 if they fight, you know. Okay. But like so what I about, said, what about but no, like I said, like I said, before we can assess, we got to wait tomorrow. I already got that fight on ESPN. I'm going to watch that Benavides fight. And if he does bad against this guy, he better not even speak Canelo's name. He better I go. It was on there. Showtime. Yeah, so it's Showtime. I got that too. I got okay. all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah, 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 yeah no, so I'm, I'm just saying, saying that. No, no. I, no, I just cause I got ESPN and Showtime. So if it fights on ESPN and Showtime, I can watch them. The zone I can't. All the other ones I can't because I ain't got money to pay for them. But at the end of the day, it depends upon my assessment is tomorrow night is fight. After his fight tomorrow night, I will know how to assess him. Because if he looked bad against a person we don't know about, then you're definitely not Canelo ready. But now, if you go in there and you outbox them or stop them, then we'll know. Tomorrow is our eye test. If you're a true boxing fan, tomorrow night, showtime is Benavides. That's his eye test. We'll see how well he do. Nah, man. I just I disagree with you that one on, on that one, D. Hodges. Um, I just don't think that, the, that his competitor, uh, you know, Excuse me. Uh, I think uh, he's known for his brother, Rashidi. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's why I said earlier. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we're giving this guy credit for what his brother's done. You know, I understand that, that he's his brother. But to be completely honest with you, I wish uh, Jamel was at 168 and Jamal was at 154. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, J J uh, Jamel was at 160 and Jamal was at 154. The reason why? Because I feel like Jamel's dog is the type. To, to be hungry enough to actually fight a Canelo the way that, that you need to fight a Canelo. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just my thoughts. I I, I feel like Jamel's style at 154 is the type of dog you need to fight a Canelo. I don't I don't think Jamal has that same dog in him that Jamel has, bro. And, and that's unfortunate because I've only seen that in the last couple of years. I, I thought, okay, you know, because we, 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 we had to differentiate who's who. You know, we just seen two twins, and, and they were always together and shit like that. But in the, in the last couple of years, we see who the, diff the, the, the difference in styles is. And I feel like Jamel is the bigger dog, you know? And it's only because Jamal had to move up. He had to on dog because they promised their mother they wouldn't fight. Believe me, they promised that. They said we'll never fight each other. They said it both out their mouth that that's why Jamal moved up because we are the green and the blue and the red. So eventually we're going to have to move up so let me move up to 160 little bro because jamel is the little bro naturally so he's like yo you hold down this 154 let me go see what i do at this 160 they had to they promised their mother they won't fight just but i like the Veronis because the Veronis, that's why i respect them twins or brothers because they said if the price is right we'll fight each other right now you got to respect the Maronis. After both their fights, they asked them the question like, man, I'll fight my brother right now for three million. Like, there's some people that are like that, and the Maronis are. They're willing to fight each other, but I can understand the Charlos because they promised their mother. Imagine a mother sitting there watching both her sons fight, and one, both of them are getting beat up by each Bro, other. How, how would that affect? Let me say how would that affect, how, I'm saying, how would that affect your mother watching both Yo, her sons? Yo, D. Hodge. Why you think about it? One more thing, David no, Benavides, go, bro. He's a duck. 
The Jamal I'm Charlo is the duck. That. I'm just saying, why you think Vitaly and Vladimir never fought each other? The I just sit up here. I can't remember brothers. They don't want to fight each other because it's hard watching one son hey. beat up the other. And you watch them fight in the house. But now they're in the boxing. So I just, I understand as you being brothers, you know, why the way that some people move. And that's why, because like, think about it. Uh, 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 what are the brothers? Uh, the Diaz brothers, you know what I mean? They wouldn't fight they, each they other. Not, they wouldn't fight each other because well, you don't want to you don't I got a question to you. D. Hodges, since you're a boxing historian, and I know you know your boxing really good, man. Uh, so what's your memories of uh, Larry Holmes when you was a young man coming up in the game? What do you remember about Larry Holmes? Man, when Larry Holmes and him was boxing, I was only like two or three. I know, I know about now, you know what I mean, after his fights now, but I'm not that old. I'm only 40, so... Them, you know, anything before 1980 something, I wasn't even watching boxing. I didn't start watching boxing in 88. So anything before 88, I was eight. I didn't know about it. But 88 is when my dad introduced me to it. And I could tell you from 88 on, I could pretty much tell you whatever I could watch. Because people, like I said, were poor. So we couldn't afford pay-per-views. That's why people would throw fight parties. My dad, he used to throw fight parties throw fight parties and get money off the gate. So it's like he paid 50 for the pay-per-view, but you charge your 10 friends $10 a pop to come watch it, you done made your $50 back profit. So it's like, I don't know. I only know what I could know. And and I'm 40 now, so some of the half of the fights, I really got to be like, think. And that's when you know you're old, when you got to pause. Once you get 40 and above, all y'all people under 40, watch when y'all get 40. That's what I've noticed. Any channel you go on, people 40 and over, they got to pause for a minute, like, because you got to remember. So, but believe me, I've been watching boxing since eight. So, anything before 88, that's oh, do you just... remember any of those uh, Larry Holmes fights? No, I wasn't alive. I remember him and Ali, and I, I mean, him and Foreman, of course, I remember those ones. Larry Holmes, oh, okay. Yo, so uh, so I got a, another question for you. Uh, you know what I mean? You being a big time boxing fan, you know Terence Crawford, of course, your favorite fighter, man. W what do you want next for for your favorite fighter, Terence Crawford? What is the next fight for him, in your eyes, if you could pick? Yeah, everybody want Arrow, but that's not happening. Arrow's so you I told you, stuck. I told you, I told you earlier. I already answered that question. I want him to beat up Yugas. <laughs> Cause yeah, Yugas, because you because you still because at the end of the day nobody else got that win over Crawford but Ugas could force for the fight but he probably don't want to but if Ugas want to really push he can come and talk shit yeah bud you're scared to beat me up because I beat you up in the amateurs yeah nigga what's good let's fight da 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 and now if Bud don't fight then he's a duck. But beat the fuck out of Ugas, he'll destroy. I him. know he will, but he needs to do that because they're still talking in the media about how Ugas beat him in the amateurs, and I hate that because we was talking about this show earlier. So what? Whoever beat up whoever in the amateurs or in sparring, that don't mean nothing in a real fight. But people still stick on sparring. Sparring, because sparring, sparring, you're not really trying to hurt the person. You're just trying to get your skills up. So a lot of people sparred and beat people, and then now they fighting the professionals and get knocked out. Now, don't ask me to name no names because I'm drunk. I'm not going to remember. But I know mad people that won in the amateurs, and then they went and fought and then got <laughs> knocked out in the pros. So. Yo, let, let me say this real quick. So the fight is over. Rungs, uh, rungs if I... Rung beside with the stoppage, man. This is the guy that beat up Chocolito, the first man to really beat Chocolito down. We know Juan Francisco Estrada, he beat Rung, Rung Vasai in a fight. So Rung Vasai gets the victory, you know, a former world champion. And, um, you know, tomorrow night, Chocolatito versus, um, we got Chocolatito versus Juan Francisco Estrada. Of course, maybe this fight right here will get Rung, Rung Vasai a title shot once again. You know what I mean? Also, David Benavidez, the boogeyman, returns back to the ring. Shout out to David Benavidez, bro. You know what I mean? 
So I guess we're going to wrap it up. Any free smoke Friday tonight, uh, Glenn? Major Key Boxing? Oh, honestly speaking, man, I could text you in a minute, man. Let me hit up Black and Brown. But, but yo, peace to y'all, man. Uh, I, I really was uh, about to exit anyway. Uh, but, yo, uh, always uh, great talking to DJ Saddam, D. Hodges, H. Money, everybody else who came through. Um, you know what I'm saying? Love you, Major Keys, bro. Love you, Pimpin. No problem, bro. I appreciate your support, man. Always coming through. So, so yo, that's, that's nothing but love. For it's sure. Great. I appreciate that, man. Thanks, Steve. What up? It's funny. For sure, DJ Saddam, man. Appreciate you, man. The great boxing knowledge that you bring to the channel. Man, keep it up, man. You know, we, we respect everybody over here. We respect everybody's opinion. And, man, you know, feel free to say your piece at any time. You know, uh, Rung Safai. Rung Vasai gets the victory. It, I mean, what do you know about Rung Vasai, and what do you think about that win right there? Uh, they, you know, the, when The Zone did that little documentary, Repeat or Revenge, they put a little little bit about Rung Vasai at the end as well because ultimately if they can't get a unification, another unification for the winner of this fight, of Estrada Chocolatito, they are going to try to get a rematch with Rungvisai, basically. Uh, because Rungvisai, after all, is the man who has beaten them both. I know Estrada uh, avenged his loss against him. Uh, and I know that the first fight with Chocolatito was quite close. And I guess, you know, I, I wasn't really mad about the decision, but it could have gone either way. So um, would, but would you he, like... He did knock okay. him out afterwards. So I don't know if Chocolatito would be interested in in a trilogy with Sorong Visay. I think he has very, very bad memories about that fight. And he, he fought quite hard to come back after it. So I'm sure he would shoot for a for another unification, maybe with Yoka or something like that, rather than facing Rung Visay again. For sure. Absolutely. So, you know what I mean? Hopefully... He can get a title shot. You know, uh, appreciate DJ Saddam once again. Um, D. Hodges, thank you for coming through. So I guess we're going to continue with um, Free Smoke Friday on Black and Brown Boxing. So I guess I'll see y'all on a Free Smoke Friday, man. Appreciate the All brothers. Right, man. So, you already know I love you. I'm about to go to Black and Brown. If he got a panel, I'm going to 